Gamers Podcast, episode 12. My name is Jacob Best in the Realm Hotter. Today I am joined by Trollbeard. Howdy, y'all. And Blackbeard Bob. Hello. Just hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. I like the troll is like a very Texan howdy, and Bob is just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> I'm a little more relaxed. That's true. I don't know. Trollbeard's on vacation. He should be very relaxed. <laughs> It's nah, I, I, I'm I'm always angry at all times. It's kind of my problem. <laughs> I'm not anymore. Thirty years of, of rage. As of two days ago, I'm not anymore. I'm totally chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now that I'm on the fun employed life. Fun employed. <laughs> Fuck you, SDC. <laughs> that means we're gonna get top quality content from you now, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's all I deliver, though. <laughs> all right so this week we're going to talk about what we've been playing that kind of includes battlefield 5 destiny 2 forsaken bob bob the bob bob uh and <laughs> <laughs> i can hear myself why can i hear myself i don't know i can hear you too someone fix their audio there it goes and trolls nope i did it i heard it again that's, That's not fine. me. Yeah, I, I can't I, hear I'm you. Muted. Well, I can figure this out real quick. Well, I hope you can. Shut up. Hey! Ha, ba, 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 ba. I can't. Now, okay, one of you are fucking with me. <laughs> I was... mean, I can click a button and restream the audio into no, <laughs> Discord no, and really make a horrible feedback. <laughs> feedback <loop. laughs> It's Good like old a, banana like a, meter. Like a... It's fine. It's not. It's not like it's an audio podcast or anything. Yeah, <laughs> nah. Nah, that's not what we're here for. All right, and Trollbeard is gonna round things up for this week. It's Bob. I just saw it. What? Are you playing through speakers? No, I don't even have speakers. It's you. It's me. Yeah, your thing lights up, and I can hear myself. Hmm. And there's the cocaine. <laughs> Maybe. Can I it's a hell of a drug. It is a hell of a drug. Trollbeard is going to round things up with the Spider Man review. Or you want to call it a review? I don't even know. Uh, yeah, I can. Like I said, I, I've got probably another 30 minutes to an hour before it's platinum. You're an insane I just person, wrapped it up. Man. Yeah. Just just a solid eighteen hours of Spider Man in two days. Spider-Man. Never heard nobody. Spiderman, Peter Spiderman of the New York Spidermans. And we're gonna <laughs> talk about uh, Carbine Studio shutting down. Some Eve Online news. Some new Lord of the Rings MMO news. Uh, the Direct being the Nintendo Direct being delayed. Some Pokemon news and some weird Switch stuff with the cloud. So that's that's gonna be in this podcast. Uh, let's go ahead. Me and, uh, Troll, we played Battlefield 5. And, um, it's Battlefield 5! Yeah, the, uh, the map they have, uh, what? <laughs> I heard of that time. <laughs> See? <laughs> Bob's fucking Do you just have, like, up. the volume yeah. in your headphones, like, super high, Bob? No, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. I don't, I don't know either. I'm scared. Let My me, nipples are red. It's a defense mechanism. I don't, I don't. I don't think that's fear, buddy. <laughs> We're going through technical difficulties. But Let me uh, see if I can turn this down a little bit. I but yeah, this this map is uh is really neat. It's just really fucking like claustrophobic in a lot of areas. There's so many little like rat holes to run into between some of these objectives. Yeah. And they've really done some interesting verticality stuff with like this train station area. Part of the train is derailed into other buildings. Right. So then you can kind of go from the second floor across through a lot of areas. It's just, yeah, it's it's just another Battlefield game. I mean. And, you know, it's <laughs> this is going to be a repeat of what I said uh, you know, a couple weeks ago or whatever when I was talking about Battlefield 1. It's a good game. It's a really fucking good game. This is one of the coolest parts of being able to actually build things. Um, yeah, the fortification stuff. Yeah, yeah. it was really neat. Like the, it's they're good additions, and it's gonna be a great game when it comes out. But like, 
man, I just, I don't feel like I need to buy Battlefield games anymore. Yeah. And that kind of bums me out because I'm a Battlefield guy. But just like I feel like I don't need to buy um, Call of Duty games anymore. But This looks like he's playing Fortnite. It does. Really, really, it really does. Beat Fortnite. And I don't but, know uh, if that's a bad thing. It was pretty they're, cool. they're trying, you know, because I've got, you know, beta access to the blackout mode for Call of Duty, which starts on the 10th. Nice. So I will have some firsthand experience with their Battle Royale mode. Did you pre-order to get that? Uh, I did the old school Amazon thing of pre-order physical disc, then just cancel it because they don't charge you until it ships. Huh. Makes sense. <laughs> so if you ever want to get pre-order bonuses for like a beta, go to your old pal Amazon. Jeff Bezos gives no fucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this battlefield is like I said, a good addition to the series. It's a good game. I like world war two myself. Um, I'm excited. That it's back to world war two. I don't think I'm going to play this until oddly enough, Anthem comes out because then I'm going to get origin premiere so I can play both of them. And yeah, I mean, it's a good battlefield game. Yeah. They're making some interesting changes to the way the classes work. Uh, the way the reviving works, the way ammo works. Like, they've made a lot more changes in here than I was expecting. Yeah. That were kind of confusing at first. It's like, oh, hey, I've got, you know, med kits. I can't just, like, spam, toss them out to everybody. Oh, hey, I don't have much ammo. i got to go find an ammo box. The ammo boxes are usually only at the objective points. Yeah. Or you pick up ammo off of dead bodies. So it's kind of like encouraging people to push a lot more because they can't just like keep themselves eternally resupplied to corner. Right. Which makes sense. I mean, in a in a, a war scenario, you wouldn't have infinite ammo on yourself, no matter no. what job you're assigned. <laughs> right. No, you... Uh-oh, Bob cut out. Uh oh, spaghettios. Still there, Bob? You hear me? Yep. Yeah. I'm here. Okay. You're kind of cutting out whenever you talk, though. Say a full well, sentence. you know, probably, probably because I had to adjust. I had to adjust something. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? Is that better? That's much better, Jeremy. Sounds better. <laughs> that's that's just hurtful. Like, <laughs> damn, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, look at him. He's a spindly little candle guy. What the he got fuck? fire in his butt. Did he just leave? Oh, he did. <laughs> oh, we just forced Bob oh, out of okay. there. No, okay. no, damn no. it, he's back. <laughs> no, okay. God he was just it. flexing on us. He, yeah, he was flexing on us. <laughs> Bob doesn't like, flex on shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so yep, yeah, that's our that's our Battlefield Five beta review, and uh, I mean this next one's gonna go bad as well. We played Mega Man Eleven. I, me and Troll played the demo. Did you play it, Bob? No, I honestly forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, I, it's want, on I want to play it. now. Like it's on PC, Xbox, Switch, PS4. Oh, okay. Like the demos out and everything. It's... I think you and I both played it on the Switch. Yeah, I played it on the Switch. It's fine. It, the, the Mega Man game. Yeah. I mean, now it has like a slowdown mechanic, which it, this guy's not using for some reason. He's just really good against those guys. Um, it has like a he slowdown mechanic it. and it has like a power up mechanic. Oh, there's a slowdown. Yeah, yeah. So, which is really cool. My problem is it seems extremely difficult and I don't know <laughs> why that is. Maybe I'm just bad at these games now. <laughs> Well, no, Mega Man games have always been extremely difficult. I love oh, yeah. Mega Man X, though. Yeah, the wow. Me- X games were a little bit... This! Like, this more is where friendly. I got stuck every time. All of these parts, I just kept getting my ass handed to me every time I made it to Block Man, the actual boss Ooh. of the level. I never made it that far. This oh, guy whooped my ass. It took me a couple of dies. A death dies. <laughs> a couple of dies. The, the fuck <laughs> am I playing magic? <laughs> 
Just rolling the die. You see, this guy is even like, I could not kill this motherfucker. Oh, you couldn't kill this guy? This ah, guy's there easy. we go. Yeah, it, no, he's not. He just, we're watching the video. He's not easy. <laughs> he doesn't look that hard. He is. Well, he's one of those bosses where, like, as soon as he separates, that's a real good point to use your slowdown. Right. Because you yeah. can figure out where he's going to go and avoid him and get right in that tiny hitbox and dodge all the damage. But the cool thing is with the gear system is, you know, one increases your damage, one slows down time. And if your health is low enough, you can hit both at the same time as like a get out of jail free card. But you think they add a slowdown mechanic, it makes the game easier. It does in certain aspects, but then they built the rest of the game to fuck you over with it. <laughs> oh sure. Yeah. Well, they don't want to just have a an easy way to you know cheese your way through yes, the game. Do. That's what I wanted. No, that's well. No, too bad. <laughs> They're lactose intolerant. No cheese here. This is Mega Man, right? Big boy territory with our blue pants. Didn't some game <laughs> actually have like a, a cheese mode? I can't remember what the fuck it was. It was like a really hard game that actually had a mode that made everything a lot easier. Well, I don't know of anyone specifically that did that. I guess you De- know, Deus Ex or... does that. It has this tell me a story mode. Yeah, Deus Ex does that. Celeste gives you a lot of options to toggle how hard you want it to Maybe be. Maybe it's Celeste that I'm thinking of. The... um upcoming tomb raider which happens like in two days what the next tomb raider comes out on the 10th tuesday Shit, I have third Damn, class already class. yeah you probably aren't missing much oh no those games are great yeah they're cool like rise of the tomb raider got really weird because in like weird like siberia or whatever i got time now <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, he's got all the time in the world I should probably go back and play that. I can't afford the next one. But, <laughs> but yeah, the <laughs> to finish the thought with uh, Tomb Raider is it has toggles for exploration, combat, and puzzles to like tailor you know your experience of how hard you want those individual categories to be. Hmm. So like if you do like the exploration thing all the way on hard. Like the little bit of paint on the things that tells you where things to go, like the yellow highlight stuff is yeah. no longer there. Oh, okay. It's just you're just like, well, I guess I'll figure it out. <laughs> it's like this That'll is just rough. all green. This is a jungle. What the fuck can I climb? <laughs> fuck that. That would be rough. Yeah, like some of that just seems kind of dumb. Like the puzzle things. By I guess from what they were talking about with the difficulty on that is it will tell you like Laro talked to herself more as far as like giving herself clues or you know thinking out loud to give you hints as to what you can do. Right. But then if you turn it all the way to hard, like she just shuts the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> is You're that just like, is that like uh anti feminism mode? I, I I guess like <laughs> she I guess the fuck up. I guess the lady can't think. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just <clears throat> rude, and we weren't gonna talk about the riot thing. <laughs> we might as well bring it up now. <laughs> what you talking about? Uh, but yeah, so yeah, it's also like a really bad timing for that game. Like all of those games have had really bad release times. Yeah, and it's, they're they're really fucking good that first Whoa. Tomb Raider game is really good yeah so is you know Rise it's just the problem is it's like what weren't both of the 2013 Tomb Raider and the second one they're, both of these reboots weren't they like limited exclusives on the Xbox originally I don't know cause I think yeah the the I think they were both one year exclusives Okay. Or at least the second one was. The second one got PlayStation exclusive stuff. I know that. Yeah, well, when they they brought it over, they added stuff. But it was a year later because they gave the definitive edition. Like, when you got the PS4 version of Rise, it was everything all in one go. I want to say. Or that's how the first Tomb Raider did it. Yeah. 
e- either way, like they had some weird marketing shit with Xbox when Xbox, you know, had shit the bed and was hard up on market share. And yep. then also releasing those games in highly populated holiday seasons was also a bad idea. Yeah. And now this one, God, I didn't even know this one was coming out. Yeah, like it, it nobody did. <laughs> Except for the people who really <laughs> give a fuck about Tomb Raider. I was like, I I'm one of myself, those people. I don't I didn't know. I thought to myself as I was bullshitting before Spider-Man unlocked and I was playing the Mega Man demo and the Battlefield 5 beta. I oh, wait, Tomb Raider comes out Tuesday. I was like, what the fuck? Well, like, <laughs> RIP. I mean, it can happen where devs realize that's a shitty release window. Battlefield 5 moved itself back like a month. Yeah, but it was sandwiched between two games that are kind of direct competition. I mean, everything's kind of direct competition. Well, I mean, like the markets that are going to be buying Battlefield Five aren't necessarily going to be buying Tomb Raider. No, you know, like like sometimes that Venn diagram, you know, just looks like you know my thighs when I was younger. There was space between them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Now I'm fat, and the inner thighs are bald because they rub together. It's like a little. <laughs> All right, we get it. <laughs> Smokey the Bear, only you. <laughs> only you can you. prevent chafing burns. Yeah, just grab some of those uh those those chafe sticks. It's just like the clear gel deodorant, but unfragranced. <laughs> just Holy buttering up shit. your thighs, putting on yoga <laughs> pants to bother everybody. <laughs> Sorry about the Tomb Raider background noise, everyone. I did not know that video was playing on my Xbox. Oh, really? Fuck. <laughs> Apparently it was open in the store. Yeah, there's been a lot of I shit in, in the Xbox store that's been, like, auto-playing. All of it is aggravating as shit! Uh, all of the Xbox's user interface is fucking shit. <laughs> it's always been shit. I don't understand how people tolerate it. Alright, calm down. Look, I love the system and the things it can do, but it's just like, Jesus, do I really have to hit all the way up and scroll over to the fucking store every single time? Like, like, like it's so con- like, why do I need an entire tab for Mixer? I don't give a fuck. Well, cause like, no make that an app. I, well, yeah, I know, but make that like a thing I click and not an entire thing. I have to scroll past every single time. And see fucking Fortnite hype zone. I'm just trying to get to the store. I don't give a fuck <laughs> about your clickbait streaming. All right, Sony fanboy, calm down. Well, no, it's the same problem I have with the Sony, video Sony's apps on the PlayStation. Is way fucking worse. What do you mean? It's like, oh hey, you just slide over and click the thing you want. Searching for things on the store is a nightmare. It it literally just got changed. Like in the last two weeks, and now it's just oh, a okay. keyboard that pops up. Thank Christ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like well, I was over at my friend's house. Play- and I was starting to use that. I'm like, this is a PlayStation Three problem. What the fuck? And the thing is, <laughs> PlayStation Three had a keyboard you just typed. <laughs> no, it had that stupid letter system. I remember it. Wait, I'm sold- thinking about like original PlayStation Three, which was a web browser before it was integrated into OS. Yeah, that, Bob, did you ever use it? No. So if you wanted to look for Battlefield, you had a list of letters. You'd press B, and it would be like, here's all the B games. You'd be like, all right, calm down. And you yeah, you had to scroll a, vertically. Like, here's all the BA like games. Like it was a combination lock, you know? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Like, God forbid your game starts with A. <laughs> or Man, no, actually, mad. what was worse was... Um, Oh, what the fuck was I looking for? The it was the something. So when I put in T H E, it just takes forever to load. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a nightmare. Fuck that system. <laughs> Whoever thought that was a good idea should get fired. It's all yeah, fine. but probably, uh, probably like the said, same that, guy who doesn't want crossplay. That that's <laughs> that store interface just got changed universally. Like. Sometime in the last week or two. Moral of the story is, fuck Sony, Xbox is superior. So let's move on. (laughs) (laughs) 
No more comment needed on that one. So, this week, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been playing a lot of Destiny 2. No, there's a shock. Yeah. Who who was it that said you were going to get that on day one? <clears throat> Everyone ever that <laughs> ever, ever knew the man? <laughs> Listen. Even if I don't buy it, my dad's got it. We're library sharing on our Xbox. Yeah, but my like, dad they, they bought didn't, it any fucking ways. My, but my dad didn't get it day one. He got it day two. <laughs> but somebody had it on day one. Let's, somebody's got to avenge Cade, okay? Bob's not doing yeah. it for another fucking two weeks. Maybe. Two weeks. Maybe as in sooner Maybe. than two weeks. Maybe as in I'm still not sure I want to buy it yet or not. Oh my god, it's so good. Alright, well here we go. So, Destiny 2 Forsaken is the expansion of expansions. It is so fucking good. As soon as the game starts, it is Destiny 1 Nostalgia. Introducing you from characters you love from uh, the the House of Wolves and Destiny One, and just the fucking tearjerker K death scene, and like right after they they do the whole death scene, you have to do a mission with Cade, and he's so fucking Cade charming, and it's just like stop, <laughs> please stop, Cade, please stop, Nolan North, you're not the real person. No, I. Th- I've read that it wasn't Nolan. I thought he had already taken over for like most of the dialogue. Uh, I have to look it up. Somebody on the subreddit said it wasn't, and Reddit's always right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, Reddit is definitely the truth. Yeah. Always. Always. But I don't know how I feel about this bow gameplay. But what? This guy with the bow that we're the watching. The bow is so good. <sighs> I guess if like you're a Hanzo main or something, but I am. <laughs> this doesn't look very appealing. So okay, well, there's only like three or four bows in the game, so that's that's too many. All right, you gotta <laughs> fucking stop right now. <laughs> I don't know why this gameplay video is freezing. I thought I thought that guy was named Doug, and I remembered it was Greg. <laughs> I was like, poor Doug. He just got smashed into the fucking oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, disclaimer right now. I'm going to assume Troll never watched our Destiny 1 series. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. Uh oh. Hello? What'd you do? Hello? You there? All right, yeah. I'm, I'm scared. Okay. Where are my what? pants? <laughs> Who turned the lights know. off? Yeah, so basically. The whole time we were playing Destiny 1, Bob was calling the dregs Dugs. And that's, oh, why, really? that's why his Twitter handle is Doug Theme Song. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Because we would play through Destiny and the entire time I'd just be humming the theme song. Because when we first started playing, in the heat of like doing everything, I was sitting here thinking, why are these guys called Dugs? It doesn't make any fucking <laughs> sense. I clipped it out. It's in a video somewhere. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you know, Facebook. randomly. Uh, yeah, it's on Facebook. It's on a Future Villains Facebook. You know, randomly, you mentioned the Doug theme song. Like, that shit popped in my head as I was playing Spider Man earlier today. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Like, I never even liked that show. Like, it bothered me, like, aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> so, the bows are a great addition. And they just feel so different from everything in the game. It's so nice to have a totally different weapon. This public event is a lot of fun because this is a cryopod from uh, the Prison of Elders. So that's something we would have fought in Destiny 1 in the Prison of Elders. Um, So a boss is going to pop out of there like it would have in Destiny 1 and eventually the ground is going to have like this mist on it and you have to shoot those vents that are on the side. And then those were going to put out like these freezy orbs. You have to throw the freezing orbs at the guy. It freezes him. You have to protect him for like two minutes or whatever it takes to transmat him. Um, it's it's a hmm. lot of fun. And the enemies, I I think the enemy is usually different. Or it can be. Oh, jeez. Also, it says wanted by his name. Wanted Palos Siegebreaker. That's because the spider has a whole list of bounties you can take. And you can hunt down specific enemies. And he's one of those specific enemies. 
And once you do that, you get gear from doing that, or glimmer, or a whole bunch of glimmer, or whatever. Um, and those there's a ton of those bounties, and they're all over the galaxy. You know, EDZ, IO, Nessus, all of them have their own, and there's different levels of those bounties as well. So that right there, like, that added a lot to it. Like, as soon as you start, this is one of the first things you do on the Tangled Shore. Um, the Tangled Shore itself is a really fucking cool place. Like, all of these... All of this terrain is floating in space, but it's all tethered together with just like steel cables. It's crazy looking. So kind of like uh, Titan, uh, right? Well, Titan's on an ocean. Yeah, but ocean. everything's kind of messily tangled together. Yeah, this is just like out in fucking space, all tangled together. I was gonna say, you said we weren't gonna talk about my chafing. Oh, we just <laughs> all, all roads lead to all, all, all messy and tangled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nasty! You just pull out like what looks like a small Dominican child worth of lint from your thighs. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> why do I even own underwear at this point? It's just cheese graters. My legs are cheese so graters. You have for... to protect him until you get hundred <laughs> percent. <laughs> and then it changes the subject. It sends them off, and you're all done. One thing I figured out: yeah, a lot of people are complaining about the infusion costs, and they are high. But I'm hoping at some point, because I haven't made it all the way through the campaign, that is one benefit for me. I've been playing this game for four days straight, and I'm just now getting to the last Baron. Pretty much of choice of my own. Just because I've had enough daily stuff, enough weekly stuff, enough bounties to run around and do. Uh, I'm going to talk about Gambit in a second as like a totally separate thing because Gambit's fucking awesome. And just, I did a new strike today and it, dude, it is Destiny 1 nostalgia. Holy shit. Okay, so let me ask you this. Um are strikes still the same as they have been, where it's literally just the story mission again? I have no idea. I haven't made it very far into the story. Oh. I yeah, don't the, know. The... I don't know if this is or not. Most likely, I bet it is. And if it is, <laughs> this new strike I did today is fucking rad. Like, you have to assault the Prison of Elders. You go to oh, really? the Prison of Elders arena. Varix is gone, oh, wow. but his servitor thinks he's him. Really? So it's talking like Varix. It's so fucking that's, rad. That's interesting. Like I, So I, I needed to do a strike for my daily quest, and that came up, and I was like, oh shit, kind of a spoiler, because I haven't got to this yet. And uh, and I was, also, I was listening to a podcast or music or something at the time, and then I heard Varix, and I was like, Fuck! Turn the podcast off, up the audio, like, holy shit! And the drifter's like, nah, it's not Varix. He thinks he's Varix. I'm like, oh, that's also interesting. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> They've done such a good job with the lore. Um, I'm also I'm really excited to get further into the story to find out why the drifter is helping like you out with, or sending you out on this thing. So far, he's just been the guy doing Gambit. Um, so who is the drifter? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> Oh, I don't know if he was, like, introduced in some kind of way, or they were like, yeah, here's this random dirty hobo that leads this weird event. He is a rogue light bearer. That's all I know about him so far. There is a bunch of lore mm. tabs I haven't got to read yet. Um, and then apparently he gets some... He's in the story at some point. I don't know if he's going to be the new Hunter Vanguard, or... It's interesting, I though. Bet you, I bet it's Cade. What, the Drifter? Yeah. Kate's yep. dead, Bob. Yeah, and? <laughs> this is a fucking sci-fi fantasy world. You don't think they can bring someone back from the dead? Kate needs to stay dead. This needs to be important. It needs to mean something. It really does. <laughs> I know that was a smart-ass response, but <laughs> admit the Ace of Spades which is like I think like one of the last exotics you get quest wise right now, which is you know, Kate's gun. That motherfucker is so prevalent and PvP is ridiculous. PvP has changed so much and I 
don't know if I like it. Because it's all shotguns and hand cannons. Hey, that's my kind of game, then. Don't play <laughs> Destiny, then. No. <laughs> I respect myself, occasionally. <laughs> and yeah, so I've, I've played a bunch of competitive, and i played some quick play and rumble. And I do okay. But I definitely don't do as good as I used to, and it bothers me a little bit. So, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know why this guy has left. Skip ahead. Maybe. Um, so far, I've hunted all the barons except uh, the rifleman, which is the one who destroyed the ghost. Because I'm kind of doing my own little head cannon thing of waiting, saving him for last. Um, <laughs> this one, the mindbender, I really wanted to show you. Because this is a straight up fucking oryx fight. See if I can find it. He is, he's kind of like allied himself with the hive and can control them somehow. Here we go. You go to the ascendant plane again, and it's it's just really. Cool. Uh, the mad bomber I did earlier. He the mines from the prison of elders that you have to dismantle. That's a big part of the fight with him. Um, the rider was really cool. There's also all of the areas in the Tangled Shore. Oh yeah, he's looking at that squid thing. See? That thing's fucking weird! <laughs> I'm, glad I'm not the only one that noticed it. Yeah, that is fucking cool. Um, but all, there's all these little areas in the Tangled Shore that I've noticed. That is just like a straight up squid upside down. Like Yeah. What? Yeah. Looks like a plant. It's weird. I don't know what it is. It might be a worm. I'm assuming it's a worm. And uh, so, like, there's been little areas in the Tangled Shore that you find, and you're like, "That's weird." Including this this guy's area. You're like, "That's a, it's a big fucking hive cave. What is that?" Or the Mad Bomber. You're like, "Why is there so much acid around?" And then you go do their quest, and it's like, "Okay, go in that acid pit and find the the writer." It's like, "Oh fuck, that's what that's there for." So there's all these little storytelling cues around the Tangled Shore. And I know after this, after I get through the Barrens, there's probably going to be some kind of story thing. And I'm eventually going to have to do a whole bunch of quests to unlock the Dreaming City. And then once I get to the Dreaming City, there's a Court of Oryx type mode, which is, you know, like a, a boss wave kind of thing. And a couple other things. And then more quests to do there. So I'm, like, I'm four days in, and I've barely done anything. That's so fucking exciting. <laughs> and, and I still haven't done all the warbind shit. <laughs> so I'm hoping this is like enough to get me really back into Destiny. Also, I haven't touched my Xbox copy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and that's like, if you don't get back into this, I gotta go there because that's where my dad and the boys are. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see indeed. Um, the other thing that I've been playing a lot with in Destiny, of course, is Gambit. And that is this new PvE mode, which is what we're seeing right now. And then you go into this portal like we just saw. Thank you, gameplay. And it becomes <laughs> PvP. For 30 seconds, you have to get kills. So if this guy, please kill somebody, he's going to get a kill here and it heals their primeval. You just saw their health go up. And the way you win this mode is by getting kills on smaller enemies. They drop motes of light. You have to go turn in those motes of light. And once you get to 75 motes, a boss spawns. You have to kill that boss before the opposing team kills their boss. And you win. Like we just saw. Uh, so, it's really a PvE mode of killing as many dudes as you can to kill a boss. All the while, it being PvP, as in when you turn in those moats, you're sending blockers over to the other side that closes their bank, and they cannot turn in any more moats until uh, they destroy those blockers, and then their bank comes back up. Hmm. So that, that fucks them up, and they can't put any more moats in. And also, whenever you die, you lose all your moats. So when you go over there and you fight them, before the boss is spawned, they just lose all their moats. And it tells you how many moats they have. So you're going over there and you're targeting the guy with the moats. 
And also the block. Right, you're trying to take him down. Yeah. So that he permanently loses those moats. He doesn't drop them. They are destroyed. Right. It really fucks you up. I have played so many matches of Gambit where the opposing team has turned in 20 moats. We've turned in 75. We're fighting our prime evil. We're halfway done. They're catching up with moats. They come over. One of them comes over, fucks us up, heals our prime evil. They spawn theirs and they win. Like this mode, I have never played something where it's like, we're winning, we're winning, we lost. What the fuck? <laughs> that just sounds aggravating to me. It's really not. It's, and it's also best two out of three. It's extremely, I don't want to say tense because it makes it sound bad. But every time I finish a match, like so far, I've never been like, this is fucking dumb, I'm done. Every time it's like, I can do better next time. I can find a better loadout. I can do this more efficiently. And that's awesome. It's kind of like doing a raid every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now how, how long fix. is... What? Go ahead. I was going to say, he just needs another fix. Every yeah. round, it's like, oh, right. oh, let me go again. Oh, man. Oh, right in the vein this time. Oh. That's great. And you're ranking up through Gambit. Getting good gear, like I posted that hand cannon today. I think it's called Trust. I think it's fucking awesome. It explodes when it hits things. It it's like super accurate. I think the first shot. It's a great energy hand cannon. And I'm working towards. They have a badass looking pulse rifle at rank twelve. That's what I'm going for. Yeah, I'm having a blast with Gambit. That might be. That's probably why I haven't progressed so far in the story. Is mainly because of Gambit. So how long is a typical match? Uh, 15, 20 minutes, I think. Maybe it's a bit longer. Even for, like, best two out of three, like you were saying? No, I, that would be per... You know, I don't I'm know. talking, like... Total. I mean, like, all in all, yeah, start to finish. Shit, I don't know. I would guess 30 minutes. <sighs> Yeah, so my assertion that this is basically like first person MOBA mode <laughs> is kind of yeah. holding up the more I, and more it Yeah. Didn't you say that the other day, Bob? What's that? Or no, maybe, maybe Troll said that in the last podcast. It was the, the last podcast when you were talking about being hyped for it. I was like this cuz yeah, we also started talking about battle <laughs> Yeah, it's I remember a little, that now. It's a little bit of a MOBA cuz you're killing enemies and trying to get to the Nexus, or in this case, the Primeval. You got creeps, you got lanes, I'm saying. I mean... <laughs> uh, yeah. A little bit lanes, because it tells you, like, if they're at the pit, they're at the drill, yeah. they're at whatever. Right. One of the maps I was playing today, and so far it's my favorite map, is... Um, is it maybe IO? It must be IO. It's very Vex-like. Uh, there's a bunch of portals, like, all over the place. Like, there's one underneath a drill... There's one just up on a wall, and they take you to the different pa parts. And in chat, I've had to tell people, like, use this portal, and they're like, oh, shit, I didn't know that was there. It just takes <laughs> you right to the other side of the battlefield, you start killing shit. <laughs> that, that map is so far, that's my favorite. But there's been, there's this one, uh, there's the one on IO, there's a uh, Prison of Elders one, there's a Hive one. There's a bunch of different maps, and then every time you play, the enemy type is different. The blockers are always taken. Um, and there's some kind of lore behind all of this, too, that I want to find out. Because obviously, you know, how is he controlling all this? Uh, he says sometimes when they're, when they're on the field, the crazies get crazier. So that, that makes me like, well, what, what does that mean? And one time I went over... I did the, the portal to go over to the other side, and he said, embrace the darkness. I was like, what the fuck? What does that mean? <laughs> I love that Q, shit, uh, Destiny. Cue Best in the Realms Pepe Silvia montage. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what that you means. You brought it up. You can explain it. Uh, well, so in the show, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. You've probably seen the meme. Of the guy in the office smoking a cigarette, pointing at the board. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, he stayed up for like weeks. Yeah. Like, all this mail. 
comes this building for Pepe Sylvia, and I went to go look for him. He doesn't exist. Who the hell is Pepe Sylvia? <laughs> so he's just been searching and hunting the clues, wow. trying to find the truth. <laughs> so just I, imagine you just stressed out now, not at a workplace, but still. Definitely not at a workplace. I don't have one of those anymore. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm just having a blast with Destiny now, and I'm, I'm very happy about it. And I, like I was telling Bob the other day, the other thing I'm excited about with all this new lore stuff is we're going to get new uh, My Name is Bife videos because that guy makes incredible lore videos if you've never seen it. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see what comes out with all this new stuff that I'm going to be doing for the next couple of days. Uh, I'm excited when the raid comes out next week. It, things are good for Destiny right now. There's a lot of good articles coming out about it, like actually good press. <laughs> and like the bad press was deserved. Just to be clear, it was because I'll tell you, I, I enjoyed. Well, I can't even say that because I didn't play a whole lot of <clears throat> of Warmind. I played the campaign for Warmind, and then I was like, "Well, I'm done." Yeah, and. <clears throat> Which is unfortunate because there is a lot more to do in Warmind than you did. Oh, I'm sure there is. I just didn't do it. Curse of Osiris is what really uh, chapped my khakis. <clears throat> but Warmind also, it was like, okay, I'm done. And Warmind was like, yeah, you are. Also, you're not. It's like, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, my problem is I can't hear, so I didn't catch right. that. Because, like, I was telling you, like, uh, no, no, it wasn't you. Or maybe it was you. I don't remember. I don't Somebody I was playing with, I was like, go look in your pursuits. And there was, you know, there's all these quests in there. There's all these exotics you can chase. There's, you know, I just finished getting the Polaris Lance exotic. There's all kinds of stuff to do in Warmind. They just didn't fucking outright say it. Well, see, and a lot of this stuff was tied behind doing a, 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 a escalation protocol. Which, which is I fun. absolutely hate. No, I hate it. I hate it. We did a lot of them. And I hated all of them. <laughs> uh, this gun that he's using now, I think, is the new exotic. Not new exotic, from Warmind. The sleeper simulant. This guy's probably, probably got think, raid gear and shit. I don't yeah, I like that uh, Escalation Protocol is laid out bad or anything, or that it's mechanically bad. I don't like horde mode shit. Right. I don't like wave-based just about anything. And I think you'll enjoy this because it is a bit different. Like, you're having to watch out for invaders and killing the boss and that type of thing. And there's all so many different types of enemies you'll encounter. But <coughs> it's it's PvP, but better. And I'm enjoying it. And like I said... For I now, would like to try a match or two just because it yeah. seems different. And it's also, you know, it's nice. Your weekly quest is only play three Gambit matches, so it's not like a million. Right. And it is fun, especially once you get into it. So we'll Yeah, see. like when you were... Mm -hmm. I was going to say, when you were saying, you know, that you'd be winning, 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 and all of a sudden they'd pull it around and, you know, get a win after you were so far ahead, it's like... I, I can appreciate that. Like like I've talked before, I realize now that I'm not into comfort food gaming. I'm here for like steaks. Yeah, because at the same them time, fat. them being able to do that to you, it means you can also do it to them. Yeah, because right. It's happened. Yeah. And, and that, that is a great you know, talking about talking about Battlefield Five is like that was kind of the thing I realized long term. My Biggest reason I stopped liking Battlefield is like, unless you pick, pick certain modes that no one's playing after like the first month of the game being out, there are no stakes. It's just wave. It's like it's basically other people are the people in the horde mode. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, yeah, like uh, this. All the all the all the parts here are cool. It's just I wish it meant more. <laughs> yeah, I think rest assured. Listeners, I will be talking more about Destiny next week because I'll get further in. I doubt I'll do the raid anytime soon. I'm certainly not going to be you know on the team of like four first or any shit like that. <laughs> but I'm hoping my only ho real hope with the raid 
is that it does have some kind of story significance because the Eater of Worlds had some. You know, you're going to kill the head of the Cabal kind of thing. But I don't know what implications that had on the greater universe. Maybe we'll find out one day. Um, but until then, I don't know. And this one, I don't know. I just know that it's a monster in the in the Dreaming City. Dreaming City? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure saying. there's some kind of story significance to it. There has to be. Maybe. Hopefully. But I do know, because you were asking me the other day, Bob, is... Uh, Aldrin, the boss, uh, not boss. The raid boss. Raid boss, thank you. And I would say no, because people already have the Ace of Spades, and the exotic quest is to kill him. Oh, okay. Well, I guess that answer is that. Maybe, I mean, maybe he comes back as some kind of darkness thing, because he is all fucking darknessy in his face. He's clearly got something wrong with him. Or maybe, or maybe something's controlling him, and whatever's controlling him comes. Something's back. definitely the darkness is definitely controlling him. He is very different from Destiny One. You know, that's that's something we haven't seen or even heard about since Destiny One is the darkness. Well, they were gonna get away from that and just say the darkness isn't a thing anymore, and I think people were so upset about it they're bringing it back. Hmm. Something, there's something, like, I, I'm i really, I can't spoil any of that, because I have to spoil a lot of other things. But, some of the beginning cutscenes are so fucking intense and so cool that involve him. And it's just like, you are an asshole in Destiny 1, but there is clearly <laughs> something wrong here. This is not normal. So, uh, that had me absolutely intrigued. I know it's not normal. You're happy to be playing Destiny 2 again. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was quite the roller coaster of like, man, this is fucking awesome. To, Holy shit, there's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad now there's something here. Something that I'm wondering if there's anything there is Blob Blob Blob's museum, mausoleum at Bob Blade. <laughs> You know, I'm I, I'm still not sure how to say that. If it's like, Baobabs or Baobabs. Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna go with Baobabs Mausoleum. Baobabs. Is this episode one? Are there more? I if there's more, they're not out yet. Okay. I hope there is more because I had a blast playing this. It's just like, like one of those old school little mystery games. You just run around, and I don't know what the significance of collecting the coins are. I never did figure that one out, other than them just being, like, your typical video game collectible. I'm glad you played this, because I just got a game on Switch. I think it's called Where Are My Friends? I think it's a similar mm -hmm. kind of thing. So I'll have to play that and talk about that next week. This looks like I mean, the like... game... Yeah. Go ahead. And this, Go ahead. this looks like some weird Undertale-type shit. Yeah, it's it's very like quirky and strange and your whole premise of the game was to find out who inhabitant 64 is which unless I did something wrong or I was just tired and not paying attention never figured out. So I don't know if maybe there's going to be more episodes of the game and you eventually get to who the inhabitant 64 is. But uh, your whole experience is just like solving these different little things to make it to the end of the game. It was, I don't know, it was a great little experience. Like it, where we're here now, it, you have to like cross the river or the lake or whatever to find like Mr. Nutty Acorn or whatever he's called. And then you go back across and you put him in a catapult and you shoot him at the bar and it kills a rat so you can go inside the bar. Which sounds retarded, but it's just fucking fun. Quirky and fun. How long was it? Oh, pff, a couple hours. What in the world? So, I'm gonna <laughs> kill this rat. Yeah, so you go, you have to, there's, you have to take the empty beer bottle and fill it up with gasoline. And then you got to give it to the guy standing next to the truck. 
so that he basically runs away and gets sick. And then you move the truck and go out that path and you have to like cross the river to find this acorn and then go back over. There's a catapult and you fire the acorn with the catapult and hit the rat. And then you can go inside and talk to the people in, in, the, in the bar. And then like that starts act two or like going through the back or something starts act two. <laughs> it's just it's just like a weird, neat little game. So it was weird. it was well worth like the four or five dollars, whatever it costs. Yeah, and this guy's just immediately vomiting in the corner. Yeah, yeah. There's a point to one of the acts where uh, it goes kind of from this like top down two D to like almost like a Minecraft style three D. And okay. <laughs> yeah, and like your your cigarette is still hanging like straight out of your mouth. And you're running around and you have to like That's find... a weird bondage crab in the road. Yeah. <laughs> you end up going back that way later in the game, like much more towards the end of the game. Well, let's say there's some kind of turn based battle system. That was the no that was the only part that had any kind of turn based battle <laughs> system. We had to kill you had to kill the chef to get the key behind them. And then you had to like unlock a bathroom stall that had like a hole in the ground in it or something like that. This is so weird. I said, that's it the is glory, the glory hole. Right. You never know what's on the other yeah, side. It, it was such a strange game. John Carpenter's there. What in the world? I don't even know what to think about this. I think I, what, I think what, that's what? how people thought about Undertale, and that ended up being like one of the best games ever. Apparently. I I'm like I'm ready to go back and replay this. Wow. Yeah. I Does, was it was very enjoyable. Just because or is there replayability to it? No, I mean there's really no replayability other than to collect all the things. Okay. There's a there's like little achievements you can get, but until you get them they're just like question marks. Like there's a screen for achievements but you don't know what they are until you unlock them, basically. And there's like a boss fight at the end where eventually, closer towards the end of the game, you find like a special pack of cigarettes or something. And uh, so you shoot fireballs out of your mouth. Okay. Or out, of, out of somewhere. <laughs> You just end up shooting. So that's like you and the fire. You and the final boss are exchanging fireballs until you kill him or he kills you. It was just really fun. It was very enjoyable. I found the uh, 3D mode. <laughs> oh, did you? This is so weird. Hey, why is Jeremy's picture on here? I'm not Jeremy. Give me I get Jeremy the fuck shut out up, of here. Don't acknowledge it. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this yeah, it's just, just weird about. and weird and quirky, and it's this pissed me off right here. So there's this little jump puzzle, and jumping does not work well in this game. It it's like very a game where everything just kind of sort of works. It's like very erratic jumping, and it took me a while to to get through the little jumping puzzle. This is clearly like somebody's portfolio. Like, look at all the stuff I can do. Yeah, and they were like, let's make a weird game out of all the weird random shit you did. This is a game that in X amount of years, some kid on a podcast is going to go, I know obscure games. (laughs) (laughs) I I sure hope not. I mean, that guy sounds dumb. Right. (laughs) Doesn't sound like Trollbeard at all. Jeez, just couldn't write right to the to the yeah. quick of it there. Yeah. It's like oh, no subtext now. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when this transition to the 3D and you were talking about it, it reminded me of this trailer I watched. I just posted in the Discord. I thought he was going to bring up a family man. Game. No, not not yet. But this no. is kind of obscure. This family man because it just now exists. Like, look, like they just announced it. I was like. It also made me think about, you know, Jacob here, you know, not being employed currently because it's, 
I was like, hey, do you want to become a hitman in a Minecraft world? Yes. To pay for your family? Yes. <laughs> well, that's what the family man is. That this game looks so weird, man. I just need money. Oh I my understand God. that. Soul crushing work. <laughs> Yeah, I just got fired. I can't believe this. What are we going to do? She even kind of looked like him. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. I didn't, and I work in restaurants. For me, it looked like. This looks cool. Yeah, dude. Like, this thing just immediately transitioned. Uh, man, this looks stupid. To, fuck, I kind of need this in my life. Yeah, this I'm fighting a cool. bear with a bat. <laughs> oh my god, that was fucking intense at the end. Holy shit. I yeah, I might I might want this. Yeah. Just chasing is, this hillbilly. What is, what is going on mountain. here? Oh he shot him. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you're 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 doing favors to get money. Huh. And not those ones at the glory hole. Right, different favors. Yeah, you never know. There might be a glory hole. I mean, it's not like they're going to show you the whole game in the trailer. Yeah, I, I was, I'm almost certain at one point in the Hitman franchise, it's been a glory hole. I'm excited <laughs> about that game. I'm I'm super curious. Yeah, like I saw that a couple days ago, and I was like, "Holy shit! I kind of need this." And then that stupid Bow Bobs, you know, reminded me of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, that game was well worth the like four or five dollars, however much it was. That that little uh, where are my friends game looks like fun too. Hopefully, it. I think it's on sale right now for like a dollar. I got it before I was unemployed. What's that on the Switch? Yeah. Let me uh, look at it. I've also got. I haven't played it. I haven't played One Strike or Brawl, so I'm gonna talk about those soon. A little random little Switch game that I got. Speaking of a little game that nobody's really playing, did you want to talk about Fortnite? Do you have things to talk about? Uh, i probably going to be playing a bunch tomorrow. Because when I, when I get up, I'm going to, you know, spend that last little bit of hour or so to clean up, get the platinum for Spider-Man. But they just added some new stuff. They added this new mode called The Getaway. And they added a grapple hook gun. I haven't, I haven't messed with any of those yet. But uh, like the grapple hook, you can you know attach it to objects, to people. You can uh, you know fling around like crazy. The getaway is like this team-based mode of finding jewelry in the world and extracting to like these vans. It's like this weird like crime heist game they've set up now for a temporary little game mode. But uh That's what they need to do. They need to do stuff like that. Well, they added a while back this mode called Soaring Fifties. And well the the Soaring limited time modes, which is basically like you don't think it changes much, but then it alters like the entire mobility of the game. Basically, it just means that at any point, if you're high enough, you can jump and deploy your glider. So what would require you have like a launch pad, the little trampoline you jump on, or to hit like a rift, now you can just build up, jump, and glide. So now you can just stay way more mobile at all times. Okay. And, I just want to... I just want to jump in here and say that, yeah, I want this Where Are My Friends game. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted to say. Continue. <laughs> but yeah, they're, they're, they've they hit a cool thing with this uh, mode of you find these these vaults, you open them to take a while. Like if you're carrying one of the jewels, the jewel is like a shape like a llama. Oh, yeah. It actually slows you down. It takes up an inventory slot, and you walk slower than you would normally. And how many teams are there? Uh, it's a regular match, but there's only like four llamas. But how many people and they're are pretty, on the team? Uh, well, they just swapped out the squads into duos and solos today. Oh. 
So now it was, you know, squads of four. Now it can be solo or duos. Shit. Hmm. But it's still the same 100 people. It's madness. Oh, shit. That'd be really intense. I feel like yeah. that's like, if you find the llama right away, you're fucked. You're not going to win. Well, if you get a good spot and the llama drops close to you and yeah. people push, you know, more populated areas and you get to one of the little getaway vans, then you're fine. There are people that extract, you know, within the first, like, five minutes of the game because, you know, they got lucky. It's really hard to be the squad that gets all four of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would imagine that's pretty much impossible. Yeah. I've I've seen a couple people do it, but, you know, much like every other round of Fortnite or every other Battle Royale, like, there's no, like, matchmaking as far as, like, skill. Yeah. So sometimes you just drop in the lobby and it's literally like the worst players you've ever seen. <laughs> and then sometimes you drop in there and it's fucking the MLG circus of <laughs> my asshole doesn't look so good right now. And it's all this dumbass building meta. Can there just be a non building mode for people like me? Can we do well, that no, first? because the, the, yeah, it's called the, the yeah, yeah. because <laughs> the, the shooting mechanics in this game are terrible. You wouldn't want, yeah, that's fair. I should probably just play PUBG. Yeah. That's what we gotta start playing, Bob, is PUBG. I oh, know. I guess they came out with a new map recently, I think, yeah. right? Well, they have the Sandhawk is full-time now. <clears throat> they just released the 1.0 for Xbox. Xbox, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, we need to do two things. We need to get uh, troll playing that instead, and also get him playing it on PC. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. I'm not. I'm not gonna go buy a copy of PUBG for no reason. For no reason to play with us, asshole. Well, again, I just, I just don't want to try to play that game with a controller because I'm not gonna be using a mouse and keyboard. It's a lot of work because that game <laughs> controls like absolute shit. Did Bob leave again? No, I'm here. Oh, okay, I'm I just here. making sure because you said he was going to use a controller and, instead of a mouse keyboard. I know if you rage quit. No, that's fine. I know he plays with a controller. It's okay that Troll's different. Dude, I, I had. I'm not going to go into it for because it's personal reasons, but I was forced to use a controller on my PC Destiny the other day because I literally had, <laughs> I had no room where I was for a mouse and keyboard, at least for a mouse. So, and, but, and it was fucking weird. I didn't like it. <laughs> so it was like I I do it on Xbox because I have no other choice. But on PC, right. I was like, I have I have Crucible weeklies to do. I'm not doing them. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I was able to go back home shortly after and play like a normal human being with a mouse and keyboard. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I have Fortnite is so much better with a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, that's. Why it's been a point of contention in there. Still haven't, you know, fully implemented the uh, selective matchmaking to, you know, like if you're playing, filter out people that are using other types of input. That's not a that's not a thing yet. Yeah. As I was made obviously aware of my first few games back. Yeah, this this looks kind of like fun. They probably hmm. I get they're not keeping it as a mode, I guess. Well, they do all these limited time modes. You know, make different things, different rules, different setups. Uh they've just added, you know, a new feature to the, the final parts of the storm. So now like it was that the storm just closed all the way to an end point to where by the end of it, everybody's just permanently in the storm until the last person alive is still now alive. Everybody else dies. Uh, They changed it up to kind of counteract weird turtling guys, you know, that are just building up towers and trying to stay defensive at the end game circle. They swapped it a while back to where the circle becomes like a moving eye of the storm. Oh, wow. So then, like that makes a lot of finally, sense too, because it is a storm. It finally, isn't it? at the end, will collapse all mm-hmm. the way. But the last few phases of the circle 
you'll see another circle outside of the storm that it's going to slowly transition to huh. and huh. push you in a direction. So now once it hits that phase, the storm will start damaging structures. So you can't like hope to get lucky and build some stuff where you were, the storm pushes and then it pushes back like that shit will be destroyed by the time you get to it. So it's kind of forcing people into conflict right at the end a lot more. Um, they've had modes called blitz where the storm just, as soon as you land, it's always moving. Hmm. Like it, like it starts moving as you're on the bus essentially. So it, it restricts, you know, the amount of spots you can land w- without, you know, taking a lot of damage to get to the circle, you know, where it's going to end. It's, you know, it's just constantly moving. Those games go a little bit faster. Uh, so if they do get to that end where it does the shifting in, you know, Blitz, and if they do just entirely new weird mock-ups so of these ideas of, you know, like the getaway, uh, the, yeah, they, they, they've got a lot of room to really try new interesting stuff. Yeah, they should. There's no reason. I mean, when you got something crazy like that, I mean, this Battle Royale mode's drastically different from Save the World. Yeah, so if they could find a third cash cow. Holy shit! Yeah, it'd be well, good for them. The, the, there'd just be one cash cow because, like, the, their numbers on Save the World are not are not that. People great. are still like, playing it though, aren't they? Yeah, but the 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 majority of the people I would imagine playing it are people going over to play like their dailies and weeklies to get V bucks to buy shit in the battle royale mode. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> But regardless, it's still a good game mode. Yeah, I, I mean, to a certain point. Yeah, like they like they've been working on it. But like I said, the like the final area, like Candy Valley, I want to say the there there were two final areas of higher difficulty zones. The very last one still isn't finished. Like, oh wow, yeah, like it's got a lot of work still going on. Yep. Like they'd have to do so much work to repurpose that game to make it a lot more interesting for more people that I think it's just going to kind of stay on live support for now. Apparently. I mean, like they're, they're still working on it. Like every well, it's still, know, update, it's still early access or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Right? Both, both it and battle Royale are still technically early access. Right. Okay. So, uh, you've also been playing Spider-Man. I've been playing too much of it. Apparently, because you're, <laughs> you're done with it, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I, I, since 11 o'clock my time, Central Thursday, to about 8.30 my time today. So, what? what <laughs> when did it actually come out? So, it came out Friday, yesterday. Okay. But, you know, midnight release... You know, it goes midnight as soon as it hits this country. So midnight for you guys, oh, it's 11 man. o'clock here. It's 11 for you, yeah. Or if you're in California, it's like 9, so, nine o'clock at night. So this it's explains like your rage towards the Nintendo system of 11 a.m. or whatever the fuck Yeah, it is. <laughs> literally, it's like it made you wait until it's pretty much the next day in like the first country. It's like it makes you wait <laughs> until they come into the office and do what they damn well please. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like this we're Nintendo. Off, You'll man. deal with it, bitch, because you want Mario. Because you're a whore. I was like, yes, sir, please, Mister Miyamoto. <laughs> yeah, I've I've got into troll stream a few times, and this is troll playing, and well, all trolls con- gameplay is when they're yeah. talking about a game. It's his stuff. Yeah, it looks like holy shit! It just looks so cool. Yeah, it does. it's super fun. Now, one of the things everyone always asks about: Wait, what? Know, the Sandman was in that. Is it that was a, a vial with some of the Sandman sand. Oh shit! He wasn't sure if he let open it up if you know, like a tiny little Sandman would show up. <laughs> <laughs> open it, Peter. We need to know. You know like the. Like the scene from Army of Darkness where he cuts up his evil doppelganger <laughs> yeah. and the little guys 
swing out and start beating his ass. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like one of the questions everyone always seems to have is like, how does the swinging feel? Because that was kind of the thing they, you know, sucked at for years. They finally got right with, you know, the Spider-Man 2 from like the PS2, Xbox era. Yep, yep, yep. And then they just kind of proceeded to fuck it up again until this game. And the thing I want to tell anybody is the swing in this feels amazing, but it's different. Because the swing in this is all about momentum. Like, it's very friendly to keep you moving. Those big guys, until you figure out how to deal with them, they fuck you up pretty fast. <laughs> it's, easy, it's easy to get overwhelmed. I just saw myself die. I was like, God damn it. Don't you hate it? <laughs> but, uh, so, like, there's, like, low stakes as far as, like, the swinging goes here. It's very relaxing. Are you actually attaching, like, choosing what you're attaching to? Uh, For the most part. Like, huh. it's... It's I guess that's what that little focal a... point is. Yeah. Well, no, the focal point is where you can zip line to. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can just like hit, you know, L two and R two, and he shoots out a line and pulls himself in that direction. Gotcha. And you may see it at some point in here. You can like, as soon as you like land at the point of contact, you can hit the jump button and like launch yourself as like a springboard. Huh. Hmm. Uh, there's an upgrade when to make it, you know, when you're high above central park, you cannot web sling. Yeah. Like you'll see me have to like dive in until I can shoot a web on a tree. Yeah. But I feel like in the old games, no matter where you were, no matter how open it was, you could web sling. Well, yep. that was the Especially thing. Especially the, the first Spider-Man for PlayStation two was really like, that. I remember that being a good game. I love that game. <laughs> I don't care if people think it was terrible or what, but I had a blast playing that game. Looks like you need to you get know, this then. I want. Well, I would have had a PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, why well, is the, it a uh, fucking PlayStation exclusive? What the hell? Sony owns the rights to Spider Man. Oh fuck! Yeah, so Damn. basically, I'll never play this. But yeah, the uh, the thing is. Like I said, with that Spider-Man 2 that everyone you know, was really into, it was it required, it was heavily heavily physics-based. You also yeah. had to attach on the shit, which is why it had certain moments in like story missions where you had to get out to like the Statue of Liberty and you had to like swing off of helicopters that were out there. So you had something to connect to. But the thing is with this one is like I said, it's all about momentum. It's got all these different things to keep you moving. Uh, there's no like fall damage. Oh, there's not. So there's no real risks of you, you know, trying different things. Uh, but yeah, like like I said, the PS2 one was way more like like a Tony Hawk or a sports game, <laughs> where it was like hardcore like skill ceiling like the guys that were really good at swinging in that game could do some insane shit yeah if you you know had ever played the challenge missions in that game you saw like the little the video playing of like the example of like the i guess the game testers playing it and you saw this guy like swinging backwards doing like 180s catch on the pole and do 360s around it, all this other crazy shit. Whereas, you know, so much of like the really interesting stuff with the swinging in this game is kind of instance based. Like you have different activities to key into these things. So for the most part, things that would have required you know how to do and latch on and say that Spider-Man 2 is just the like, hold R2 to wall run hold R2 to like shoot through this little area. There'll be things that pop up with the, the little zip line. It's like, Oh, there's a giant construction pipe. You see the little dot line up, you shoot, you know, L2 R2. He pulls himself and like rockets through the pipe, you know, and scoots through and doesn't, you know, you don't have to like aim that perfectly to 
make it through. It's just a animation you queue up in the right scenario. Like like I said, it feels good, but whereas, you know, like the swing of this game is just something that's enjoyable to do. It looks like it's it. not like it's not like the driving in GTA. <laughs> where you know there's plenty of open world games that, you know, the driving is serviceable to good. But then you jump in a game like GTA and you find yourself bullshitting yeah. for like eight hours just driving and dodging the cops. Is the combat Not... basically just Arkham? Uh, to some extent, like it's got some stronger variations of things. Uh, as you go further on in the game, you realize like the real strengths of staying airborne. Because it's really easy to get like overrun on the ground. Yeah. Definitely looks uh, like there's a lot of people to fight at once. Yeah. And it's and, you know, and unlike Arkham, you know, they do all kind of gang up on you a lot more often. Yeah, you know, Arkham They're... they they kind of like, we'll do this what I want, Batman. <laughs> like, no, all right, like... dumbass. <laughs> You'll have these guys with the fucking guns firing at all times. You'll have the guys rushing and throwing shit. Oh, this guy just threw a grenade. Hey, man, I'm punching your friend who's right in front of me. And he threw a grenade. I guess you're just like, hey, Steve, get fucked. <laughs> One thing but that yeah. really intrigued me when I jumped into your stream yesterday or whatever is you were going through, like, the different suits, like the armor oh, suits, yeah. and that's so fucking cool. Yeah, because you get different suits. Dude, yeah, I, the, I well, am a Marvel dork, so it's stuff like that. Like, I can't wait to look into Easter eggs and stuff in this game. Oh, there's there's a lot of stuff. You know, Stan Lee made his cameo. Oh, wow. Did he? Yeah. Uh, they dedicated it to Steve Ditko after the credits. Okay. Because he just passed away a few months ago. Yeah, he's, you know, one of the creators of Spider-Man yeah. and most of the OG Marvel stuff that people care about. He was an artist. But, uh, yeah, man, some of those suits. Because the cool thing with a lot of the suits, well, well, well almost all of the suits, there's a few that are just kind of like cosmetic only. Sure. But the all the suits essentially give you a new power. So it's kind of like your, your super. Is like the your meter Iron charges Spider up. in it? Yeah, the Iron Spider. Well, a version of like the Iron Spider suit is in there. Okay. And the <laughs> super you get that when your meter charges and you click, you know, the left and right stick together, that's when the four arms come out of the back. That's and now that you, you just have combat while the meter, you know, runs down. Huh. You, so, like in this suit, the the white spider suit you get in this game. Its default power is battle focus, where when you click it, like you just recharge your focus meter a lot faster. So focus meter builds up. You'll see the prompt to hit triangle and circle, and that's a finisher. So like some of these lower level enemies, you can just you know one hit them and get them out of the way for quick crowd control, or you know other other means of doing other things. So it keeps you. Like as you're fighting and you're keeping your combo going and you click that, then your focus, which has already gone up pretty quick, now is like just flooding back and forth. And you can really like wipe a crowd of small enemies pretty quick. The one I used almost exclusively the entire game is called Web Blossom. That's the one in this video part here. You see in the top right, the the meter's refilled. What happens with Web Blossom is he just jumps up in the air and just spins in the 360 and just fucking machine guns web huh. and just hits hmm. like everything within range. And you can clear out a lot of the low level enemies with it because if they get hit, you know, into oh, a wall, they get stuck. It. Yeah. It's, it, it was great to, you know, just get people off your butt cheeks when you really needed to get them out of your. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah, so you can, you know, quickly capitalize on the guys that are webbed and, you know, throw them. If they didn't get stuck, you can, like, uppercut them in the air and then slam them on the ground. And, you know, if they're fully webbed, if they impact the surface, 
they get stuck. Uh, you can just shoot your regular web shooters a few times to finish webbing them up. To you know, it's just a beautiful crowd control move yeah. for when you're going really out of the way. But there's one, one of the suits I think, which was like the pre-order bonus or the digital bonus because I bought the the set. I mean, you can get it later on. It was just going to be like if you bought it digitally, you got it. You yeah. didn't have to pre-order it. But if you got a physical copy, I think you got to wait until they, you know, just release the little code to download in the store. But uh, it gave you like the punk Spider-Man outfit, and like his, you know, suit power was a guitar. He just jumps up and has this <laughs> giant shock wave that pushes everybody away. Hmm. Or you know, like the Iron Spider suit, you've got the other arm, so now you just got like. Slightly stronger damage and longer range, so you can hit combos from further out. Okay. There was one, the Spider Man Noir suit. Oh, okay. Uh, his power you'd want to use before you go into an area that you're trying to be stealthy in. If you cue his power, it you know turns the world black and white because hmm. you know he's from a black and white comic, yeah. And it silences everybody. So where you would see, you know, if you alerted somebody, like the red exclamation point pop up, and they start to call for backup. Okay. They can't, like, it, you know, mutes them essentially. Like, they try to call, but they can't do anything. And then you have, you know, much more time to salvage you being unseen. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so they have all sorts of cool stuff. There's cool gadgets like there's a gadget you unlock later on that literally is like a an ant like an anti-gravity bomb that holds people up in the air for a few seconds uh there's you know like the trip mine you've probably seen in trailers where you shoot like the little thing it's got like a laser beam they walk into it then it shoots out a web and pulls them into the wall or the surface you've got and this is different gear that you can take yeah these are like in the top right of the screen, you see the web shooter. You've got a, a a gear loadout. You can just hold the left bumper, you know, and swap yep. to whatever thing you want. I noticed he's fighting Fisk agents. So I guess pink kingpins in the game. Yeah, kingpins in the game, and the thing, <laughs> the, th- the thing I mentioned to you earlier. I realized playing this game is so. There's two different married couples that are the voice actors for main characters in this game. Okay. So uh, there's, you know, the police lady that's working with Spider-Man a lot. Her name's Yuri. And then the guy who plays Spider-Man, whose name is Yuri. Like the, <laughs> the lady who does the voice of the character, Yuri, right. is his wife. But talking about Wilson Fisk, Wilson Fisk is motion captured and voiced by Travis Willingham. Who's just a, a big chunky meat of Texas, you know. Like <laughs> he's one of those guys that got into like the Funimation voiceover industry that was actually from Dallas. <laughs> like he played like football in like high school and college. But his wife is Laura Bailey. Who is the voice of Mary Jane? Oh. <laughs> but the thing, the thing that was making me giggle, and I've thought about it, you know, every time, you know, Travis and his wife Laura happen to be in the same game, is that for whatever reason, uh, Travis Willingham has kind of become the voiceover cuck. <laughs> 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 Where, like, <laughs> damn. Like, like he's working well no he's like like the characters he's been playing in a lot of these games his wife is another character that's getting fucked by somebody else in that game like so like in you know the telltale batman series travis was the voice of two-face and laura bailey was the voice of catwoman okay and you know as batman you have the option to swing in there and you know steal selena kyle away right. from Two-Face, and it drives him crazy. 
And then <laughs> and this, you know, MJ is, you know, Spider Man's, you know, main squeeze. And so now he's playing a different character <laughs> where his wife is getting fucked by somebody else. And so it's like I realized he was he was the uh the voice acting equivalent of Tim Burton. Oh, okay. Because, you know, <laughs> Tim Burton's wife, Helena Bonham Carter, for whatever reason, like, he's hired her to be in all these movies yep. where she has multiple sex scenes with other dudes. <laughs> <laughs> That's because his decisions, just like his movies, are typically terrible. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Suck it, Tim Shots Burton! Fired. But, uh... You're but yeah, that, that, that shit was making me giggle, thinking about Travis... <laughs> like so many times this character is just like that deep voice dude that just gets screwed over for whatever reason or he's the asshole <laughs> I feel like Troll's knowledge of voice actors might rival my knowledge of like wrestling <laughs> <laughs> well yeah like I uh I've been, I've been you know deep in animation most of my life so a lot of this shit you know sticks sticks just deep do in there. a podcast of you just talking about all that <laughs> <laughs> but uh I do have if we could take a little break from Spider Man unless you're totally done. I do have an obscure game <laughs> of my own. Alrighty. Oh yeah. Did you ever play Whoop Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects? Oh yeah, with the awful like fucking uh, terrible. Elvis impersonator. The whole <laughs> game was just bad. Yeah, it was not good. It could have I mean, been, it, though. It was, you know, Masters of Terrace Kasi bad. Yeah. Like, this game, I remember, because I used to go to my local uh, movie gallery back when we had those. <laughs> back and, when that uh, was even a thing. <laughs> yeah, and you could pay, like, 15 bucks to play games all day. And, you know, like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge Marvel dork. So when this game came out, it's like... Supposed to be like this open, you know, Spider Man versus Wolverine, and Spider Man swinging around, and Wolverine's flying at him with the claws. Like, holy shit, that sounds amazing! And you play it, and it's like, this is amazing, right, guys? Right, look around, right? Got how come? How come you all don't want to play this with me? Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone else knows it's fucking terrible. Yeah, because they also added like new characters. Like they had some original characters in this game. Yeah, I want to say they were like some random mutants because there's one guy who's like a awful, like I said, uh, Elvis impersonator who's got like electricity powers. I want to say, <laughs> wow. Now on the opposite end of this, as far as Marvel games go, do you ever play po- uh, Punisher the PS2? Yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah the Punisher game that's on like PS2 original Xbox was really cool. It was very violent. Yeah, it was. Oh my god! It, Apparently, we're just yeah, skipping probably. right to the violent shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. This is just okay. This is fine. There's, there's a scene where like you just like smash a guy inside a glass window and just he punishes. Just, yeah. There's Ooh. one where you like feed half a guy into a shark. Yes. I remember that. Also that game's great. A lot better game than it should have been was that X Men Wolverine's or I keep hearing that and I've never played it. It's one of those things where sort of like I think I mentioned previously, High Moon Studios, the guys who made like the Transformers games. I okay. think I also mentioned Raven Software. Like they made uh the the Wolfenstein that was before, you know, the machine games, yeah. Wolfenstein games. They also made that X Men Wolverines game. Okay. But, uh. Yeah, I've heard so many. I, I want to say we may have talked about this on the old 8 Bit Bastards podcast. And, like, everybody being like, you have to play this. You're the Marvel guy. You love Wolverine. You've never played this. And, yeah, I've never played it. It's on PC. <laughs> So I wouldn't have to like go out of my way to to get it on anything. This looks Yeah, like I mean cool. it's it's not like insanely great, but it's just 
good times. Like it's a cool Wolverine story. It's very violent. Uh, I love the model of the character. Like when he starts getting shot up, like his body's getting ripped apart. That's cool. You you'll see like you know the adamantium skeleton hanging out. Oh shit! And as you get away from you know like fighting, his his skin will start to grow back. Like they did a really good job of showing him being the Wolverine part working. Yeah, part that makes him kind of well, one of the parts that makes him unique. Yeah, like you see all these cuts now on his stomach in this video. There's one time I got shot with a rocket. I remember, like he turned back around. And I just saw like straight up Terminator Two, like <laughs> like half of his skull, his metal skull hanging out. I mean, the game even visually kind of holds up. Oh my god! Yeah, like, <laughs> like just holds his torso. Like, yeah, they, they like they did a crazy good job with like the rendering of you know Wolverine being fucked up. And <laughs> there's a lot of violence in this. Uh, pretty good gore scenes. Did you ever play the very similar to this, the Conan game? No, I've never really been in the Conan. That was, you know, it was just like a God of War knockoff. Okay. It was actually pretty good. Huh. Right. Did you have anything else about Spider Man? Uh, it's great. Go play it. I, uh, towards the end, I, I really wish they would have done some different things with Mary Jane's character specifically. It sounded like, <laughs> it sounded like you're getting ready to say like, toward the end of his life. He, <laughs> uh, but no, like there's a point where it's like somewhere if you go back and watch like, <laughs> like the stream I had the the, the recording of it. I just literally yell out. I was like. Oh great! Look at you acting like a fucking plot device, because <laughs> it's like she just like starts making these really dumb, reckless decisions. It's like you could have not been a fuck, said you were going to this place, and still had the same elements happen. You just didn't. You didn't have to be like a fuckhead, you know. <laughs> it's like you you could have not made directly stupid decisions and then gotten mad when someone saved you from your directly stupid decisions. You could have just said, Hey, I'm going to go over here and do the stupid thing. Cool. All right. Right. And then still have the, <laughs> you, you still could have got to the exact same area, the exact same points, the exact same story beats just without, you know, like this random moment of certain characters just being absolute fuckheads for no reason. And then having some, sharp turns later on like the silver sable character shows up in the game and then all of a sudden there's like a hard like turn towards the end i was like really that doesn't make any sense uh cool i guess uh it's very straightforward if you know your spider-man comics especially like the storyline involving you know the origins of mr negative it's not exact Oh yeah, he's the but main villain, right? He he's the main villain you would see in any of the trailers. Okay. Uh, well, he was the primary focus for a lot of stuff because he's kind of like the the main catalyst for things going on. Because right at the beginning of the game, you arrest Wilson Fisk. Oh. So that's probably the, and, the real villain. And then you spend the rest of the game, you know, dealing with the aftermath, you know, a power vacuum showing up whenever the big guys, you know, sure. out, of, out of play. So all sorts of crazy shit happens. It does some cool stuff. Like it did some things with certain characters I'm really happy about. Like I liked the choices they made. They left it open for, you know, the DLC they've already got planned out. They've left it open for sequels. So, what? Can, where does it take the lore from? Does it like from the old Spider-Man show, or is it from the comics or the movies? It it's pretty straightforward. Uh, kind of taking different Spider-Man comic stories and melding them together. So, like the main Mister Negative story is from you know the primary continuity. Right. You know, the Earth 616. 
but you know they've shown him in trailers, so it's not super spoilery. But Miles Morales is a character in the game. Oh, okay, he's from the Ultimate Universe. Uh, so like like the, they they they've blended. That's so cool. like if you if you know like the real stories of these characters, it's super surprising. I like I said the the way they get to those characters being who they are. And, you know, their motivations, the way things wrap up for them at the end of the game, they did some good stuff there. But it's it's not like, you know, Arkham, was that, Arkham Knight levels are predictable. Like, oh, yeah. we all know it's Jason Todd. No, like, it's not. Saying, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> like, like, I mean, technically they made a new character, the Arkham Knight, but it's the, she just... You know, put a new skin on the the same fucking idea. No, no, they didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's definitely not Jason Todd. Yeah, clearly. But just kidding, yeah, it is. <laughs> it, it's amazing. Uh, I, I I'll be very happy once you know the DLC starts coming out because there's a lot of stuff they could do mechanically. And a bunch of cool stories they could, you know, start telling before you know, they hang it all up and move on to the next game. Is uh all like the normal Spider Man villains in it, like Mysterio and Scorpion and all those guys? Uh there there's a lot of them. Not all of them. Okay. But I mean the the world the greater Marvel world is referenced fairly well. Like the movie world? Uh, well, not necessarily the movie world, okay, but Marvel in general. Th- think of you know this being kind of like its its own universe, but far heavily, far more heavily inspired by like the comics. So, and that's actually I was worried that this was like an MCU game because that would kind of no, suck. That was the entire thing with their Marvel Game Studio initiative was that yeah. They went to these companies to let them tell their stories. That's good. Like they, they're not linked in anything. They're, they can be their own thing. Because I feel like that and, would be very limiting, especially for Spider-Man. Yeah, because you got to think of, you know, how hit or miss, like the different shows on Netflix are, for you know the Marvel characters, and they're not even yeah. always directly referencing anything from the movies. Or like yeah. that terrible show, Agents of Shield. It is a bad it, show. Which apparently it's gotten drastically better. Yeah. From the people that stuck around with it. But uh, you know, they're really hanging on to the rules established by the MCU. In the game. So they or the TV show rather. The, the TV show okay, Agents gotcha, of Shield. Yeah. So they're really limited with a lot of the stuff they can do, which is why they started off their whole Inhumans section, and then they eventually had Ghost Rider. Like, that's oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, I'm glad to yeah, hear that they're kind stuff. of doing their own universe, basically. Now, I'll just be happy to see anything from Square Enix about their Avengers game. Yeah, that weird first-person thing. That maybe VR... Yeah, I'm not excited about that. Well, no, like they've got you know IDOS Mont- or Square Enix Montreal working on yeah, an Avengers know. game. They put out that VR game that's that's out, and you can play it and buy it. Oh, is that different? Yeah, this that's unrelated. That was oh, a different okay. studio. That's not even like the Square Enix guys. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they're making essentially uh, another one of these right here. That would be nice. But as Avengers. I would love like a co-op Avengers game. That'd be badass. That would be pretty cool. Especially if it's good. <laughs> yeah, but that's the thing is of all of the kind of projects they announced at the same time of Spider-Man, Spider-Man is the only one we've really seen anything for. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad it's, it's good because like we needed a good Spider-Man game. Yeah. yeah. Like well, I mean, the Spider-Man games in between were hit and miss. Yeah. Like, 
the 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 swinging was shit, but the actual game itself was there. Yeah, and that was the thing. People, you know, wanted another Spider Man game to just swing around and bullshit in for hours. Yeah, and not just eighteen these... to nineteen hours, right? Yeah, <laughs> and not and not just like the the Beanox games. Some mm-hmm. of them were real hit or miss. They were the ones that started cranking out like the yearly Spider Man games. Okay, there for a yeah. while. They eventually, you know, because they were, you know, had like roughly like nine months every game to put another one out. Jeez. Like a lot of those became these level based games. And so, if you didn't yeah, want to play, yeah. if you didn't want to play, you know, level based Spider Man game, if you want to go swing around a city, you had to go boot up an old PS2 copy of Spider Man. <laughs> yeah. So you've got, you said you're going to have like 19 hours in when you platinum it? Uh, roughly. Uh, is that doing everything in the game? I've done literally almost everything. Okay, so you could roughly say it's like 18, 20 hours of gameplay. Yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff you can do. Okay, more collectibles I, I and build, whatnot? There's, there's a lot of secret collectibles I've discovered now that aren't associated with the trophies or the platinum. Yeah. So, like, there's a Daily Bugle like covers for the newspaper. Uh, you just randomly find them. You land and you see like a red me- a red newspaper box. You walk up to it, hit the button and it shows you like a cover for a story happening. And there's like 40 something of them you can find. <laughs> uh, I discovered the last unlock for like your, you've got these like mods you can es- equip to your suit. Yeah. That do different things like, oh, you take less melee damage, you take less gun damage, or some of the ones get really weird into like you build up like a static charge while you're in the air. So as long as you stay in the air, your attacks now have like electricity damage and you shock people. But as soon as you touch the ground, it disperses and you've got to like jump up in the air and start a combo again (laughs) to build it back up. One of those, the very final one you can unlock, it pops up on your mini map a little camera icon for all these secret photo opportunities. So one of the things, you know, I found was like the firehouse from like Ghostbusters. Okay. Cause you know, that's in you know New York, that firehouse. Yeah. There's one of uh in Wall Street where you know the bull statue would be. Right. You know, the, the uh, you know, they legally couldn't put the bull statue in there because the people that own that property didn't want to license those rights to them. So, you know, the, the guys at Insomniac contacted like the creators of Lockjaw, the dog, the giant dog that teleports from the Inhumans. So the the statue in Wall Street is a giant, you know, bronze statue of Lockjaw, the, the <laughs> giant like bulldog. There's other cool, weird. I love stuff like stuff. that. Yeah. <laughs> like some of the regular photo opportunities are like taking pictures, of like the Avengers Tower and the Baxter Building and all this other shit. Empire that's State cool. Building. See, that's another thing. They couldn't put the Baxter Building in there if they stayed with the MCU. Yeah. That's awesome. You find Doctor Strange's house. That's fucking cool. Uh, there's a there's a cameo from Shirtless Spider Man. I just saw something about that like right before we started doing the podcast. Is it is it a kind of funny reference? Yeah. Because you know, Greg Miller crazy. won't leave people alone. Yeah. So there's like a costume party you go to at a, at this college and there's just a guy with just you know shirtless like Hey, yeah, look at me. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> he's, just, <laughs> he's just a pudgy guy, you know, in a Spider-Man mask. And he shits on your costume. Says you got it from the dollar. So I was like, fuck you, you hairy chested <laughs> ape. That is so fucking funny. I'm looking for it right now. Well, here it is. Yeah, there, there's tons of it. Like the photo mode stuff. People have already been posting. You know, at Greg Miller, you know, at Game Over Greggy. What the fuck? (laughs) All the weird shirtless Spider-Man stuff they've been doing. (laughs) What? Get the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) 
Like he's even got like the converse, you know? Like <laughs> that is too good. Yeah, you see the <laughs> But yeah, there's all sorts of crazy weird references in there. Like in that same party, the college professors are dressed up as like villains of Spider Man. I saw that. So you see like the Mysterio, the Scorpion, and the Vulture. That's awesome. Uh, you come across, you know, a bunch of weird references in the suits. My favorite suit, uh, as far as like visually to look at, is the animated spider suit. That's cool. So, like, you're just literally looking like a cartoon character, like cell shaded as you're swinging around hyper realistic New York. Is the Venom suit in it? Uh, no, there's. Uh, a couple dark suits of various styles. Huh. Um, they have the the Ghost Rider suit. The fuck? Because there was a short period in time where Peter Parker became the Ghost Rider. Holy shit! Is so the Spider Mobile in it? No, there there are no drivable vehicles. That's bullshit. Spider Mobile should be in it. No. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, like you just see like this solid white suit with like these like ghostly flames coming off his body and a giant skull. Like oh. like instead of having a <laughs> Spider-Man mask, it's just, you know, the flaming skull. And all sorts of weird shit. All these other armored suits. There's a stealth suit. There's a Spider-Man the Last Stand where he's dressed up like a straight up like kung fu like old Bruce Lee movie style like button up top jacket and like karate pants and shoes all sorts of cool stuff man I'm I'm gonna keep you know looking through there and try to find some more cause I think as I bullshit clearing out the last few like random encounter like crimes you gotta solve in, in the multiple districts of New York uh, I'm going to be looking for those photo opportunities. And all those backpacks also have some cool references to things. Hmm. Who would not want to put the spider mobile in their game? Someone who didn't want to, you know, code physics. Right. <laughs> it's a thing. It should be in there. Yeah. It should be DLC at least. Well, you have a little spider drone you get to walk around in. If it's DLC, I'll get a PlayStation and get Spider-Man. <laughs> well, I was hoping they had, you know, the spider bike. Because did you ever see, like, the old, like, 1960s made-for-TV Spider-Man movie? No. Where <laughs> there's a... It's either the Spider-Man or the Captain America one. They both had all, like, hour-long made-for-TV movies. Huh. Spider-Man even had one that was, like, only in Japan. That was a live-action movie really? yeah like the 60s and 70s were weird i mean i'm but sure it was time. i'm sure it was you know a list quality yeah <laughs> but there's like a scene i don't remember if it's you know spider-man or captain america because it's been so long since i watched these where like he's driving on his motorcycle and he's got to like he's like imagine like all like the the overpasses and underpasses and like a big turnaround area. Like like imagine like those four leaf clover roads of all these yeah. highways meeting and they've got to mix around and get you going the right direction. He's got a transition going north to south or whatever. And so he just stops on his motorcycle, just picks it up and throws it like straight up to the overpass above him and just jumps up pulls himself up and starts <laughs> driving again. It looks so stupid. It looks like they lowered the... Th- it looks like they were just reversed the footage of them lowering it down slowly. <laughs> so it made it look like he threw it up in the air. <laughs> this was a movie? Yeah. Or, like I said, it was like a TV special. Something like that. I know there... It may be the there were two Captain America ones. I think the Spider Man one was the one that was only in Japan, so it was probably the Captain America one. 
I can't find anything about a motorcycle. This looks terrible. Oh, oh, oh yeah, like, did you ever see any, like, the footage of, <laughs> like, canceled Fantastic Four movie from, like, the yes, mid-80s? Yes, I've seen that. Oh, God, I have not, and I don't even know if I want <laughs> to. Oh, my God, this looks bad. <laughs> the, ones, the ones they released were bad enough. Oh, yeah, it was definitely the 1979 Captain America movie. Oh, geez, this looks fantastic. <laughs> the motorcycle Look thing. Look yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the web come out like that? Yeah. I, I remember the... <laughs> that web really got them. Yeah. I remember the first time... I watched this, this whole thing, start to finish. I was under the influence of some hallucinogenic substances. So were the people that made it. You don't even need yeah. to help. Oh also, I, also, around the same time, uh, you know the anime series Lupin the Third. Yes. They made a live-action Lupin the Third movie in the 70s. I have time now. I need to watch Lupin. <laughs> that was absolutely fucking insane. Much yeah. like how ridiculous this is. Imagine, you know, transitioning an actual cartoon into a real life movie. Oh my god, I might have to watch this. That's also this pretty great. Also, something I recommend you you go and find you can find it all on YouTube. Italian Spider Man. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Everyone needs Italian Spider Man in their life. It sounds familiar. Did you ever see uh, on YouTube, they've got a show, it's called Danger 5? No. No. It's like this parody show about like old spy shows from the 60s. The okay. same guy who created that show, like this was like his early project, Italian Spider-Man of like... <laughs> I also have a deep knowledge of <laughs> bad like exploitation movies from the 70s. Jesus Christ, still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I can't tell if this is a Spider Man or if this is like the Mario and Luigi movie. <laughs> it's, it's funny to me, is because like this is this is made by like Australians. What? And Ooh. that <laughs> that scientist, yeah, that scientist guy <laughs> is like. Later. The scientist guy here is like that guy's dad. And he's actually Italian. And he's speaking Italian. And in that show Danger 5, he plays Hitler. It's like, here's just this nice old Italian guy. <laughs> it's just a silly version of Hitler. And he's like, hey, dad. I'm going to need you to come to work. He's like, what? I'm going to need you to put on the mustache and play Hitler for an entire <laughs> season of a TV show. <laughs> Like, didn't you also make me wow. do some weird shit with a mice and a sock a couple of years ago, son? Like, yeah, dad. <laughs> we we, we <laughs> gotta crawl it. out of the Spider-Man hole that we have found ourselves in. <laughs> Holy shit. Dude, speaking of holes on YouTube, though, rabbit holes, be specific, I've, I went down a long rabbit hole today of Penn and Teller bull, bullshit. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I love Penn and Teller so much. Dude, just their like their old like TV appearances when they used to be on all these regular nights. They did some crazy stuff back in the day, yeah. and then they had yeah. their they had their HBO show. They had a BBC show a couple different times over the years. What was really funny bullshit. was I watched a very recent video with them, and they were like, "Yeah, you know, we're the longest running act in Las Vegas. We've been there for however many years. Actually, we just signed a four year contract, so we're gonna die in office." <laughs> little shit. And I watched an old video with them, and they're like, "Yeah, we've been there for ten years. We just signed a three-year contract. We're gonna die in office." <laughs> like, what yeah. the? This motherfucker <laughs> makes the same joke every time. Yeah, but the thing is, he almost died from a heart attack and then lost the weight. Yeah. So he was he was betting you know, high there. He was gonna. And they probably will die in office. Yeah, I, they're, they're I, old men. I watched this video and holy crap, I was laughing so hard because they were trying to show this girl mentalist tricks, like how they could figure out what card she had. And it was literally just Teller holding up the card behind her. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was crying laughing, but that has nothing to do with video games. That was just something I thought I'd randomly bring Well, up. involving video games, have you ever seen uh, the Penn and Teller's Desert Bus Driver? No. Is this your obscure game? Obscure game of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so they've, they've made a couple of different weird, like, troll video games, essentially, over the years. And the Desert Bus Driver is the one that's kind of become, like, fairly popular these days because it's been like one of those charity like marathon games oh yeah i was just gonna say uh i think they do it every year like extra life yeah they they always do something with this game it's yeah it's literally you're just driving a bus in the desert from like los angeles to no you know los angeles to las vegas in real time and when you and when you get to, you know, when you get to the destination, there's a score counter you never see until you reach there, and it just bumps up to one. <laughs> and then you turn around and drive all the way back. You don't think this bus needs a fucking alignment or something? Jesus. Yeah. Why does it just yeah. constantly pull to the right? Yeah, that's that's why it's like a marathon, like, to see if you can, you know, make it, you know, how many trips you can make. On the stream, if you can okay. you know, survive one, because you've got to constantly pay attention to it. You, you can't just like bullshit, leave this game alone. This is just driving. It's not like a game where you just like, you know, grab a rubber band and hold the analog stick down. <laughs> you've actually got to keep looking back up and hit like left, left, left. Oh, a little <laughs> right this time. Left. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, they did a couple other games where they worked with some other people to put these things together. I like the dashboard is just straight up original twisted metal. It's just like a it's just like a bad picture of a real thing. <laughs> yeah. Put some art over. <laughs> oh yeah, unreleased Sega C D game. No wait. Yeah the it's Desert Bus. No it's not. I love Penn and Teller so much. Mofo the Psychic Gorilla. Where's the actual game? I don't know what this is. It's just smoke and mirrors, I guess. Yeah. Looks to be like a FMV game. Like yeah. Choose your own adventure, maybe. <laughs> uh, is there some weird Metroid shit going on in the background? Yeah, yeah the I don't hell? know. Here we go. This is Max Headroom. Yeah, right? <laughs> I don't know. That's Penn and Teller for you, though. They're going to make some yeah. weird shit. I'll tell you one thing I got to look into now that uh, I got a kid on the way. Did you guys ever play the Jumpstart games? Oh, hell yeah. I remember them. I got to I gotta find those. Do they still make those? I don't know. And if not, I need to find a way to get them again. I was going to say, there's a lot of those like educational <laughs> games you can find emulated on like archive.org oh i didn't even think like, of that yeah you can just like click and play them in an emulator in the web browser oh i just found the one i played yep this is it holy shit i had a few of these but this one this uh third grade this is a really weird tangent i'm going on uh <laughs> wait 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 is it the one with the, ro- the robot yes yeah, the same one. Oh, yeah, I remember this. These were fucking great games. Yep, I think I had the same one. I I don't know any of this. Because the reason these games were so compelling is they were fun while you were learning. Yep. Like the original Where in the World is Carl Sand. Yes, yep. absolutely. I played that one a lot. You know they're you... bringing that back as a show. On, Are like, they really? On Prime for I Hulu. That. that would be cool. You know what else I played as a kid, like learning game. What's that? There was there was one called uh, like Reading Blaster Two Thousand or something. Yeah, I think it was the same company. I think it was too. I can't remember though. Time ago. 
There was one of these games, and I can't figure it out now, where you were in, like, a treehouse. Oh, this is it. Yeah, it was second grade. Holy shit. This is a long-ass <laughs> time ago. I don't remember <laughs> the second grade one. Yeah, the only one... semi-educational game I can probably think of I ever really played was typing the typing of the dead on my I don't know if that counts. That's violent. Well, <laughs> touch how to type fast. Yeah, I still I can't do that, or accurately. I remember this one. This is probably the one I played the most. I remember there was one where you were like... And I'm really reaching here. <laughs> I don't know if you were like searching this old like Aztec place or something. Uh, that's, I think, was in this one. No, it wasn't this. You had like two maybe teenage protagonists. Yeah, see, there was another one that was I not a jumpstart like, game. I don't remember. I was weirded out by this weird Patrick Starr character in the background. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and then it's a fucking a leprechaun lightning bug. Like, what? Fourth grade, I didn't play. So apparently that's like a haunted island. This is going to bug me. I'm going to want to know what this game was called. Silly stuff. And I just remember, like, at that age, I was watching violent kung fu and horror movies. And I... Was it this one, Bob? <laughs> was it fifth grade with Joe Hammett? No. No, no, no. It was the Clue Finders. Oh, shit. I think. I think. Bob, you know, I've got a raging clue right now. I bet you do. Yeah, Clue Finders 5th Grade Adventures. I think is what it was. Holy crap. Yeah. What are... That's, are educational games hit. still a thing? Yeah, oh, they still make them, know. but they're usually just like, you know, web-based. They're not... You can still find some weird to... games on disc at a Walmart. I'm trying to see which one I had, though, because apparently there were different ones. Oh, yeah. So I have to figure out which one I had. Oh. Let's figure it out. Third grade. Mystery of Mathra? <laughs> Maybe? I mean, this I is my end. Yeah, I absolutely at least, remember this. At least yeah, I think it was, Legends of the, think it was the third grade one. I used to play the shit out of that. Also, Oregon Trail. Not to mention yeah, this, that. Whatever one, whatever one we're watching right here is the one I played. Okay. Man, th this is... I'm going to have to get these games again, and this is like all my kids going to be allowed to play. Because <laughs> I'm just like... Oh, we're, really, we're not going to go into this, but the education system is so fucking bad here. It's, I just, oh, it's, yeah. it's absolutely terrible. And I just, I wish I would have stuck with my Jumpstart games and dropped out of high school. <laughs> you probably, been probably would have had a better chance. Yeah. <laughs> probably would have. So, let's get away from that tangent. <laughs> and we've you got... talk about a weird tangent. We're going to talk about the news, which is some depressing stuff. <laughs> Hooray! Right. <laughs> Wildstar developer Carbine has shut down. Yay! Hooray! Put a little sound effect. Did you guys ever play Wildstar? I think I tried it once. It looks like a Bob game. Yeah, it was not a Bob game. It's like kind of a MM is it a World of Warcraft type thing, but you have like kind of more yeah. action oriented abilities. Yeah, it's kind of a mix between the two. I mean, there was good things about it, like how well your attacks and enemy attacks are telegraphed. But uh, one of the things that was a turnoff for me, and really this is it, but it's very cartoony. Yeah, it's very Jack and in, Daxter almost. Yeah, like it's not not like oh clearly this is a cartoon it's not um 
Oh, I'm really drawing a blank on words tonight. It doesn't look re- it doesn't look it doesn't look realistic, but it's you know it's got cartoon type characters. Yeah, it just didn't have an art style and, that connected with kind of ratchet and clanky. Yeah. yeah, but like all your characters you can make were like weird little animals or aliens and stuff. Some kind of yeah, just some really extra shit, and I just don't normally care for stuff like that as an art style yeah this i was actually excited about this i played a good chunk of it and then realized did you yeah and i just realized i didn't like it um i got (laughs) i can't remember who i played this with i played this with somebody and got pretty far in it it. it was not me no this would have been i don't know maybe not before we met no. Uh-uh. Uh yeah, I played this with somebody. It was probably Jeremy. And like I don't know, we played like a chunk of it and then one day I was like, Do you wanna play Wildstar? I was like, No. <laughs> don't. <laughs> no, I do and not. It was the same thing with the De- like Defiance. It was like, This is rad and then you played a little more and it was like, Alright, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. That like, was my I tried, route for I guessing tried one. it for a little bit and I was like, This just like this isn't bad it just wasn't for me it was too much of a wow clone because it came out in that time where everybody was just well, trying that was, to clone that wow was, yeah that was their thing i want to say this came out when warlords of draenor was live yeah this is only a couple years old like it's yeah, not, it's like, not that old. old i mean and they it was had, in early access i think they had completely that, reworked like their, their business model and everything. yeah it's like maybe four years old five. i feel yeah. like it was older four or five that. years old no Cause yeah, it was on like Steam early access. It was paid early access. Then it released, and it yeah, failed. And, it was, and they it was a subscription a service, I think, or something yeah. when it started. And then they, they completely reworked it pretty quick. Like it was, yeah, it was a hard turnaround. So yeah. I, I always knew it was like on borrowed time. As yeah, soon as they was, went with the free to play, you knew yeah. that borrowed time. Well, and that's not necessarily true. I mean, the Old Republic is free to play now. I'm not saying it's well. that way with every game. Yeah. I'm saying with this game, once they switched, well, you kind of saw that coming. Because they was, had a, I didn't want to say they had like a massive drop off of their player base. Yeah, they had a considerable change to a lot of the systems to then switch it over free to play because they realized people were just, you know, like Jacob there was like, yeah, we really lost interest in this really fast. Yeah. Whenever I play games like that, because I had played WoW, I just didn't want to dedicate the time to it and the $15 a month and all that type of thing. And it was just like, okay, this is this is WoW. It doesn't do anything better than WoW. So no. it's only me and this other guy playing it. And meanwhile, all of my friends are playing WoW. Why won't I just go play WoW? Right. And that that's and then Star Wars the Old Republic was a different thing because it was Star Wars. I love Star Wars, so that's the one I stuck to. But even right. that, it was like I you know, this was something I, I got a lot of shit for for my friends was you know, it was like, All right, I did everything in Star Wars once or twice or whatever. I'm done. Because that's just how I play games. I, I yeah. other than Destiny. And uh <laughs> and this game was it was just like, all right, I know, I know what this looks like. I know I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun, and I'm gonna be done. And it's not gonna be all that engaging for me because a right. fucking clone of it exists that all my friends are playing. Right. So they just games like this had no had no pool to them for me. Especially since that was the same way, where I was like, the art style is all right. But we do have we got a couple in the most stories here. Did you ever play uh, Lord of the Rings online? Oh yeah, because that was another one that I felt like was just uh, a WoW clone. Oh, that's a fucking that's a hard WoW clone. <laughs> yeah, is that just Lord of the Rings? So, and I guess I don't like Lord of the Rings as much as I like Star Wars, but it was fun. But they've announced that they're going to make a new triple A. Wow, MMO, or not Wow, <laughs> Lord of the Rings MMO. That's I'll be exciting. In, I'll, I'll be interested. I'm not, I won't get excited. 
hear, yeah. actually hear something about it. But as what? a big Lord of the Rings fan, I'm I'm definitely I want to see what they're trying to do. Because I want to say, <clears throat> wasn't this Lord of the Rings MMO like sixty dollars when it came out plus yes. a subscription? Yeah, I think so. But it's just been you know a lot of years. Like I think this game is probably oh yeah now it's free to play now yeah yeah it switched free to play a couple years ago. Okay, the greatest line that's ever been written is in this article. <laughs> <laughs> the untitled <laughs> project is in the works. Is referring to the new Lord of the Rings MMO. The untitled project is in the works at Athlon Games, which is the video game publishing label operated by the Hong Kong-based chicken meat supplier Liu's new video game publishing label, <laughs> Athlon Games. <laughs> what? Yeah, there, there's a lot of business well, this, diversifying. This new game is a days. screaming success already. Holy shit! <laughs> I read the. I don't know what the fuck you said to me right before I read that line because I had to read it like twenty times. So I don't know what conversation happened right before this. <laughs> but yeah, I hope it's good. I I have no hope now. Actually, yeah, never mind. I have no hope now. Well, no, like oh, no, if the studio's no good. Who cares if it's chicken know. money? I don't know if the studio exists. Is it is brand new? It's a games Athlon Media Group. Uh, our brand, blah blah blah. We're not about. <laughs> Hold on. Huh? <laughs> I'm about to ruin your hope. My hope? Why? <laughs> oh my god, we're fucked. This game is not gonna be good. Why? Oh, you. Oh, let me have it. <laughs> Oh, good. Just look. (laughs) 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 What the fuck? What the hell is that from? It's their website. (laughs) Ruse. Oh, my God. God. We're so fucked. Hold on. Okay. Um, please tell me I'm right about this. <laughs> like, like a real asshole. What is this? What the fuck? Athlon Media Group. Uh, this looks like some wow. dark web shit. What wow. it was? <laughs> Let's just forget about that. You you've seen the code in the Matrix there. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's wrong, and this is the actual one. But there's not much more on this website. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, moving on. Oh, now that all hope is dashed. <laughs> the uh, EVE Online guys got bought out. Which is fucking crazy. Got bought by <sighs> CCP Games. No, sorry, CCP Games got bought by Pearl Abyss, who makes Black yeah. Desert Online. Did you ever play Black Which, Desert Online, Bob? Yeah, I own it. I I, I I knew you were talking about getting it at some point. Now it's apparently it's, remastered. It's, it's okay, and I watched it, watched a video on the whole remaster thing. It's not much different. Um, I don't like the combat, so I just didn't really care for the game. Yeah, it, it's, it's all like it's, it's supposed all to be like, like combo an o- based and right. weird, and the reviews are I mixed. I just didn't care for it. Yeah, it's 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 one of those games where if you like it, you really like it, and if you don't, you don't. It's just not for you. And that's a grind. That is a grind fest. Like that is yeah. the game, and all your end game is not. Sorry, well, your all your end game is what? Grinding. Okay. Everything space is a bartering crime. and space battles. I think he's talking about Black Desert. I'm talking about Black Desert. I'm, yeah. I'll, I've never played Eve. Eve is uh, Eve is also grind. Yeah, but that's, that's a I, different beast, man. Yeah. Like Eve, like I've played a chunk of Eve, and it's it's real fucking boring. 
But at the same time, the social aspects of it, like all the corporations and the amount of almost player input that the the community has in that game is unreal. And that that's pretty cool. So I, I appreciate that about the game, but you really do. You kind of have to know somebody to get into that game. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, there's, Fucking bonkers. There's so much, you know, head... You know, overhead to get it get through before you can figure out what yeah. the fuck you're supposed to be doing. I it's one of those games I've wanted to get into, but every time I tried, and even when I had a buddy, he was in a corporation and everything, I tried, just couldn't do it. It's really cool though. I just hope that that company doesn't fuck with it too much because its player base is gonna be mad, and when mm-hmm. they get mad, they destroy shit. <laughs> they really do. Only in game, though. So yeah, who knows what the fuck it looks like? Happen. It could be. It looks like it's a cool game. It's just something we got into. Yeah, I, I would like to play it. I'm certainly a fan of uh, space games. But they sold the company for four hundred and twenty-five million dollars. Jesus. Yeah, they've been. Uh... Holding together for a lot of years. I mean, the in game yeah. has been pretty strong. Every now and then, the community get gets together on those giant mass like huge meet battles, up, space battles. Yeah, and apparently, Black Desert Online has nine point five million players, according to this article on Venture Beat. I, I'm sure there's tons of people who play it. Yeah, that that game is probably a heavy rotation. Asian market game. Yeah. Features massive like, castle sieges. That sounds cool. Yeah. yeah it's, I mean, there's it's cool stuff like, in it. Did you ever play the old school lineage, like MMO games? No. No. So, yeah, a lot of Black Desert Online, from what I could see, kind of gave me vibes of lineage where, yeah, there were like, you could claim a castle as your guild. And then people could, you know, make a raid and have a PvP battle to take ownership of that castle or whatever. There was there was all this weird like feudal lord shit in those games. Hmm. Holy shit! It looks bonkers. This shit will give you a seizure. <laughs> this is even the right thing. Lineage Two Revolution. Oh, that's the new one that just came out. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Castle War. Yeah, this shit was super weird back in the day. I don't know. I think this is newer. This is Lineage 2 is a newer one. Okay. Yeah, this is a, a reskin. I mean, like the old Lineage just looked like an uglier version of this. This looks hectic. Yeah. Oh, here we go. This is old. This is old as fuck. <laughs> yeah. So that's what a lot of Black Desert reminded me of would be just like a newer version of this. Like that oh. same style of massive like group coordinated shit. Oh, wow, yeah, you weren't kidding. This is old as fuck. Yeah. Uh, we're talking like dial up MMOs. Damn. Right. Yeah. Ultima. <laughs> yeah. I remember this. This is one of those MMOs that just ran for like 15 years and nobody talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> but all the people that played it were, were into it, I'm sure. But again, it's like, you know, like the size of like the player base for a game like this in those Asian markets is crazy. It's like, yeah. Like the thing they always bring up whenever anybody talks about Tencent is, you know, they publish that game Crossfire. Crossfire! Not the board <laughs> game. <laughs> They've got an FPS shooter. It's pretty much only in the Asian markets. It's a free-to-play shooter. And they've got, like, millions upon millions. It's the largest... It's the largest game in the world, essentially, that no one's ever heard of. <laughs> Crossfire? <clears throat> you, you'll find it... If you do, you know, Crossfire, FPS, or video game. Otherwise, you find the board game. 
Yeah. Uh, is there FPS? Why would they call it Crossfire? Yeah. Don't they already know that's a thing? Yeah, in a country they don't give a fuck about. Oh, that's fair. right. And it's a board game no one gives a fuck about anymore. Yeah, they just true. remember the, the fucking commercial from from this, TV when they were kids. This just looks like Counter-Strike. Yeah, probably all it is. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they in 2016, they had already grossed $6.8 billion off of this. Oh! Jesus. That is fucking crazy. There's so much money in video games over there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you've got literally 3 billion people in yeah. two countries. <laughs> That's the thing is all their games are free to play and there's always a cash shop. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the level of entry is nothing. And then if you want to spend money like everybody does, it's there for you to do. Is this available in the U.S.? Yeah, they had a North American release. I wonder if it's like any good. It looks all right. Yeah, it, it released originally in Korea in 2007 and North America January 30th, 2009. Oh, look at that. It's got some kind of zombie mode. And just like that, I don't need this game. <laughs> yeah. Just like that, moving on. <laughs> but yeah, this is still a high population game that yeah. people spend a lot of money on. And <laughs> uh, did we ever want to talk about like the potential like stock market crash of the video game industry going on right now because of China? I. Can any of us speak to that? <laughs> I don't well, know. That's a so, heavy topic. Maybe another podcast. Well, yeah, just just you know, rough r- a rough outline there. So the Chinese government has been going through. Trolls about of, to like, drop some dark web shit on us that I didn't <laughs> even know existed. So okay, so like the Chinese government has kind of been going through a lot of like changes through political parties and people in power, and like they're. I guess one of their control boards in China put a hold on all like publications of games from these developers in China just indefinitely until they, you know, complete a review. So Tencent has lost like ten billion dollars in the I past few months that. in their value. Uh so now like the new ruling they've kind of published is that there are certain aspects of gaming that they can't allow to that encourages myopia in children. Which, if you're not not sure what the word myopia means, it's people that just want to stay indoors and not be be antisocial. So, so now so this podcast... all of these companies like Tencent and like the chicken meat company, yeah, all of these companies are fucking scrambling, and they spend. A lot of their money, you know, in these major American and European publishers. So it could be dark times coming up, you know, starting like next year once these effects, you know, fully, you know, work out. Like if they don't recover, we may be hitting, you know, a shit tier wave of old THQ again for a while. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the good times while they can. All right. Maybe we'll have to take a deep dive on that in a podcast. Yeah, maybe we'll do that next week. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> so, uh, for those who don't know, we were supposed to get a direct uh, from Nintendo, and it didn't happen Thursday. because of an earthquake. And something happened afterwards too, right? They had a uh, typhoon or something a couple yeah. days before, I think. In Hokkaido. And then, yeah. And because of that, we got a couple of kind of Please. random announcements. <laughs> well, just announcements as well. Like, they announced we're getting Civ 6 on the Switch, which yeah. I'm excited as fuck for because I haven't played enough of it on my PC. Um, I don't. What's that? I don't think that's. I don't think that's one I'll buy for the Switch unless it's something maybe Rachel's interested in. Does she play Civ? No. Oh. <laughs> But well, she, she might. might. If it was on yeah. Switch. She might. Yeah. Be a good like. There's you know, already. Friday, 
It's There's one really game that's funny. like Civ on the Switch that I bought forever ago and haven't played. Oh, what's that called? Something to do with war. <laughs> hmm. I'm not gonna be able to find it now. But yeah, it's it's you know just regular Civ. It's not a a mobile or handheld version. Did you, any of you guys ever play like the Civilization Revelations or whatever Revolutions? Yeah. I haven't. I like it. Yeah, they they were different, but they were cool. They were a lot quicker to get in and out of, thankfully. Huh. Yeah, and they were kind of goofy. And they were more yeah, they had silly goofy. looking. Yeah. They 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 kind of felt a lot more like Tropico and like the silliness. World Conqueror X is what I'm thinking of. Hmm. It's on the Switch. It's it's gone on sale for like a few bucks. I'll have to look that up too. Yeah, it's worth playing. Hmm. It, or it looks like it's worth playing, I guess you should say, because I haven't played it yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also, we got uh, Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition, which actually looks kind of rad. The rage that I have seen, in fact, it's Pocket Edition and not the regular version, is outrageous. Oh, wow. I, I haven't paid that much attention. People are like... We finally get Final Fantasy on the Switch, and this is what we get. Like, huh. shut up! It's the same fucking game with like uh, with less graphics. Yeah, just stop. I, did anybody play Final Fantasy Fifteen? Nope, I didn't. I am interested I, because I guess this is a more condensed version of Fifteen. Um. And, you know, it looks all chibi and stuff. That game's really pretty. I don't know if it could be on the Switch. I don't know if the Switch can handle it. Yeah. I was going to say, it, it had performance issues on the Xbox One and PS4. Right. Oh, shit, did it really? Yeah. yeah. It God. took them a while for a couple updates to, like, smooth it out. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hard 30 FPS game. <laughs> Yeah, I think that, and I think a game that's more condensed works better on the Switch, anyways. And I don't know about you, but like, I don't mind the the chibi graphics. Like, I don't, I don't think they're bad. I don't either because it's not like just lazy chibi graphics. They're like they're actually kind yeah. of designed nice. Yeah, they've got a good style. That's yeah, they're coherent. they're at least nice to look at. Yeah. It has a, a specific art style. It's not lazy. Right. They could have just done your standard chibi, but they kind of gave them like different looking eyes and their right. costumes There's are pretty really on each point. character looks different. I'm I might end up getting this, even though I haven't played I a Final Fantasy game since like ten. I know. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I might I would probably buy this. And from what I understand, the combat system is actually really good. Well, as long as it's like... So this isn't like what old Final Fantasy... No, this has got some kind of like a a live... Not live action. Fucking... Some kind of action. action Yeah, yeah. like action-based gameplay. I hope they have... I hope they have a demo. I would check it out if they at least if they have a demo. Yeah, more games should have demos. Switch has been pretty good about that though. Yeah. Putting demos out for stuff. Well, the thing is, is like demos are timely or time consuming and cost inappropriate, but a lot of these companies realize there's a lot of gold in them our hills on the Switch. Well, that's why I think the way the Xbox does demos is really fucking smart, where they just give you, like, two or three hours with a game. They just put some kind of, like, timer on it. That's that's what they should do. Yeah. Yeah, don't make it, like, a separate thing. Just give you, like, three hours to play. Like Octave Path Traveler did. Yeah. They gave you three hours. You did whatever you wanted in that three hours. That's how I played a bunch of the Surge, and that's why I ended up wanting. To, I haven't bought it yet, but I will. I have a copy on PC now, thanks to a, a, a nice man. Um, <laughs> but on X, I still want to get it on Xbox when it gets cheap enough. And I would have never bought a game or cared about a game like that without that time demo. Right. You know, uh, talking about the Surge, did you see that they just announced like a Westworld style DLC for for the Surge? Yeah. 
that's cool. I haven't. They've got like Westworld. a Western themed robot weird shit going what? on for. Yeah, it looked kind of interesting. I just you know wish I liked the surge more. Yeah, yeah, the good, the bad, and the augmented. Hmm. I'll pull this up. Yeah, there's 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 been a lot of weird like low key news stories and announcements for gaming. Yeah, Surge is one that I've been meaning to get into because like I don't care for Dark Souls stuff, but that one something about the gameplay and like chopping dudes arms off and shit that was just a lot of oh fuck that was the trailer <laughs> <laughs> like there was just something about it that was actually a lot of fun and there was like a couple different fighting styles and stuff huh I mean I like western stuff so I need to watch western yeah, uh, I'll be sure to Give Bob a good detailed report on how cool Red Dead Redemption 2 is when that comes out. Yeah, month. you have to let me know <laughs> about that because I, I guarantee I won't play it. You don't like Western? Oh, no, I love just... it, but it won't be on fucking PC. Oh, it gotcha. Yeah, that... and I, I, I to refuse go... to sit down and play my Xbox. I got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's another thing I should play is Red Dead Redemption. I've barely played that one. Yeah, I'm going to get started on Red Dead Redemption uh, soon. I bought it for like six bucks because backwards compatible now on the Xbox One. Yeah. I intend to replay it before, you know, 2 comes out. That's a good game. Yeah, it is. It's probably one of the best Western. This might be the best Western game. You really yeah, I really can't think of a, a better one. Yeah, I mean, there's not much other competition. Call of sure, like, Gunslinger was fucking badass. Bound in Blood and Gunslinger are great. They're both Call of Juarez games. Yeah. You know, it's weird that that's the same guys who, you know, made Dying Light and Dead really? Island. Really? Gun- your Gunslinger, the arcade one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I played the other Call of Juarez games and liked them okay. What was you see, Bound in Blood was really good? Yeah, ba- well, so, like... There was the original Call of Juarez. That one, they did some weird old like PC FPS shit in that game. Like you found a whip and you did some weird ass swinging segments. It was an obvious. Oh hey, here's this Eastern European company trying to make an American Western. <laughs> oh okay. Uh, Bound in Blood is the first one where they had like, you know, a high quality game. In this weird, like, like, you know, that was, I think that was THQ. You oh, know, like, it was a 7 to 8, like, on the presentation scale. Like, it was still needed some work. It's a lot of that same gunplay you saw in Gunslinger. Just not, like, score-based. Uh, Bound in Blood had, you know, cool, cool mechanics. Like, you found different rarities of your guns as loot on the map so you could get, you know, better guns and, you know, scavenge them as you went and you're playing in this, you know, war, uh, Civil War era South okay. as these two different, two different uh, stories of the characters. This looks pretty cool. Yeah, the the best thing that I wish more games had, you know, started trying to adapt was in Bound in Blood, they had this active cover system. So basically what would happen is like if you were in a fight and you ran up to a box, if you crouched, you kind of locked in saw so- like a soft lock, not like not hard like Gears of War where you hit a button and you're just latched on. Right. But if you just went to like aim up to look over the top of the box, your character would just kind of automatically peek up and lean over. So you could kind of like, you know, slightly angle over the top of the box to get shots, you know, on people and to the side. Like it was kind of like a flawless system of immediately like run up to a thing, transition, peek out without without having to hit an extra button, fire a few shots, and then bam, be back in cover and then back up and not have to hit a button to get off of the box. 
Like, it was really cool. Like I was sad more games didn't you know adopt a cover system like that. We you know, it's kind of like that until probably the division came out, where they really yeah. heavily relied on it. Uh, no, I think there was stuff. I mean, Gears of War, obviously. Well, like the the closest thing I can tell you that kind of functioned like the cover system in this game is uh, the way cover worked in Mass Effect. Yeah, or didn't but, Perfect Dark work that way? Uh, no, Perfect Dark was a hard button. Oh, okay. Latch on. It was rough. Like, it, it was a whole, like, latch on, hard transition into cover. I want to say maybe Rainbow Six did. There was something. Uh, there was some game you could, like, just stand against the wall and then peek out. I know there was an older game. Yeah, there's tons of games that do that. Like, yeah. but as far as, like, this full range of motion behind a box or yeah. at a boulder, at a corner. You could, you know, peek out at kind of different angles uh, just based on, like, turning around. Like, if you went up to, like, the corner of a wall, you didn't latch on. If you just turned, your character kind of leaned out to look around that surface, like, Gun- as you would, you know, in person. Gunslinger was my favorite, though. That's the one I, I finished. I played the Call of Juarez games while they're okay, and I got Gunslinger for cheap. And that game, the shooting is really good. It's very arcadey, but the story is like it's it's on PC, Bob. You should absolutely get this. Yeah, it, both it Bound and Blood and Gunslinger. Yeah, Gunslinger is real short. So is Bound and Blood. Okay, Bound and Blood has a cool story, like I said, of two different perspectives. In this conflict, you know, on different sides of the war, essentially, with different motivations. Right. Like the first Call of Juarez, you can dodge. You don't need to play that. And definitely skip the third one, the which was Cartel, one. which yeah. is in the modern times, which that shit was rough. We got this cool concept with a Western thing that not many people do. Let's not do that anymore. <laughs> Let's just make a fucking <laughs> yeah. modern game. And then, you know, the next game after that, uh, they did, you know, Dead Island. Gunslinger is fun because there's points. So you would get points for headshots and things. And the way the story is told is, is this, you know, this old man, I think he's from one of the Call of Juarez games. Yeah. Like there's, there's characters through all of them. Like the. The main preacher guy you see in the very first game, like okay. it's his like descendant is like the the sheriff or the deputy marshal guy in the modern one. Yeah, like that guy transitions through like all the thing and you find a bobblehead of that character in Dying Light. Huh. Really? Yeah. But things will happen in Call of War as Gunslinger where he'll be t- t- telling the story and like blah blah blah, and they'll be like, "Did it really happen that way?" And he'll be like, "Well, hold up, let me retell it." And like the game will rewind, and the thing you just did, like he'll talk about how there were a hundred Indians around him, and like, did it? Were <laughs> they really? And you'll be looking at all these Indians, and he'll be like, "Well, there was like ten, and then it'll change to 10. <laughs> and like I think what we just saw here was he was like, "I'm glad I had the sheriff shotgun." You just magically had the fucking shotgun. So things will (laughs) magically happen in the game because he's telling the story kind of that way. That's pretty neat. It's fucking great. I've I've actually played through that like two or three times. Yeah. Like I said, it's short and it's really good. And I think he retells like boss battles or I can't. There's like a boss battle. He retells like three times. He's like, well, yeah, but how did that actually go? (laughs) (laughs) It's great. It's dude, I think full price it's like 15 bucks. So if you Yeah, I think it, it was 20 originally at launch or 15. Yeah. And then it like wasn't much. Like it's showing now there's actually skills you upgrade and shit and different weapons you get and hmm. I love that game. That's why I was saying like it might be the best western game of all time, but also Call of War as Gunslinger is fucking amazing. But it's probably number 2 realistically. 
So let's go ahead and get through the rest of this news now that we're off on so many tangents. This this show is way more focused than just me and Troll. What the fuck are you doing, Bob? <laughs> <I'm> listening. <laughs> you are. So and, and actually it's your turn to take it away, Bob, because we're talking about Pokemon Let's Go. Because uh, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this. So I want to say the stuff that got announced on, uh, I got to remember the name of the TV show. I posted a Pokenshi. Yeah. So the stuff that got shown on Pokenshi, I think was another one of those things that was supposed to be shown after the direct had already aired. Right. So I think it was just supposed to be like just some neat little extras. So really all we got here is Pikachu using what you would think is Surf, but it's called something completely fucking different. Like Surf Splash or something? It's called, uh, yeah, something like that. Water Walk, I think is what it's called. Oh, God, Pikachu's Jesus? (laughs) Yeah, Water Walk is what him on the surfboard is actually called. Okay. And then the... uh, the image with him in battle where it looks like he's using surf as a move, I think is called like Splash yeah, Splash Surf. Okay. And then Eevee has a move called Flare Burn. What it looks like to me is since I think they want to keep your starter Pokemon relevant, especially since how it was in yellow version where you couldn't evolve your starter, like you couldn't evolve Pikachu and Raichu. The same thing applies for these games. You can't evolve Eevee into anything. Yeah. So I think they want to, they're want they trying to give them different moves to keep them diverse enough to where you'll use them for the game. That also, anyway. that looks to be the, uh, the Pokemon nerd guy in the background there. Yeah, and he's, that's what I think it is, because he's fighting a Magnemite. That's, I want to say those are the only people that have Magnemites. Uh... Nerds or super nerds or whatever they were called. Uh, yeah, probably. I can't think of it on top of my head. Well, Team no, Rocket I can't maybe. Either. No, no, they they stuck to Zubats and yeah. Tatas and stuff. Terrible shit. Yeah, yeah, shitty. Just steal the steal all the world Pokemon. Use the. Shit. I never understood that. But, That's why yeah. uh, Team Skull is superior. Yeah, just saying. It's a shame the the games there suck dra- drastically. Damn. I you know I really tried to give those games a chance. I own all fucking four of them, and I can't do it. I cannot fucking play through Sun Moon Ultra Sun or Ultra Moon. I don't, I don't know what it is because I can't either. And I get to the third island every fucking time, and I'm like, why am I still doing I mean, have you got to the point where it gets weird with the portals and stuff? No. I haven't made it that far. I can't fucking get past it. I did, and I still like barely I get play. right around the uh, the trial with Mimikyu, and then I'm like, why am I... Why? why? I'm going to do this. Yeah. I've actually... I've been really wanting to go back and play... Uh... I think I own gold, silver, maybe? Yeah. I think it's silver. I started playing Soul Silver again, because that's like my favorite one. But yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I want to see what they have going on in Direct. I think we're supposed to get the new Pokemon announced. And uh, there's a couple things I, I had read that were supposed to be announced that I'm kind of glad I don't remember, because <laughs> I don't want to spoil it. For myself, yeah. I think like we know Mega Man Eleven was probably going to get announced and be like, yeah, it's like, on the Meg- store now, right? Mega Man Eleven, no Civilization was going to be announced. Then the Wooly, or the Yoshi's Craft World, yeah, that got leaked. The name for that got leaked. That's interesting. Oh. I wonder what that means. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm I'm curious because that's it's just the gameplay that we've seen. The what little gameplay we've seen, it looks. Almost like a Paper Mario version of Yoshi. I don't think like Papercraft, like like I heard someone describe it as like 
Labo Yoshi and not yeah. really Yoshi. Is it like it's like cardboard from E three twenty? Okay, yep. Yes, it's like two years ago now at this point. I think. Yeah, I think so. At least it's, last year. It's been over a year at least since the last time they actively talked about it or Craft, showed anything. Craft World, that makes sense. This looks neat. Yeah, it looks like paper and cardboard and stickers yeah. and paint. Huh. Yeah, I, it's, I'll it's, probably I'd probably buy this. It looks pretty interesting. Yeah, this is, you know, like super early footage of a game that didn't even have an official name. It's so right. early they haven't even built the houses or anything. They're just paper. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> That's how games are made, right? But see, yep. Yoshi doesn't look like he fits the aesthetic, which is weird. Right. So I think they probably just reused his model to From prototype. Because, yeah, the, the enemy there didn't even fit the Yeah, or he's on style. acid. That, too. I, I've <laughs> taken a lot of that drug in my life. It's good yeah, times. Definitely, yeah. Oh, okay, so he's an enemy to get the new egg. Yeah. Do you not know how Yoshi works? Well, I didn't realize that was like how you were like reloaded, basically. Yeah, you you, you swallow them and they become another shot. Cool. Yeah, yeah, man, this looks rad. I've never seen this before. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this to come out because I I really want to try it. You know what else I want to try that I haven't bought yet? What's that? That I Kirby? might that I might buy soon. Yeah, I played that demo and like I don't know, I don't need it. Yeah, unless you just really like the Kirby games where they've been at the past like five, six years. Yeah, I mean it's not different really from any other Kirby game. I just yeah, it'd be a good just time. chill. Yeah, I think I'd rather have this over Kirby for sure. Yes, I think if I had a bunch of people that would play Kirby with me, I w- I might get it. Right, or at least but like playing it by yourself split it might with be a little me. different. Because I don't know that I want to spend sixty dollars on that game. Yeah, because you can do yeah. like four player co op in that. I really want to play this. Yeah, this looks <laughs> this fun. Looks great. Did you ever play Wooly World? No, I never owned a Wii U. Yeah, that's the thing. Most people didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's it's true. They so need yeah, to... even if. You know, people call the Switch a port machine. I was just going to say There's that, a lot yeah. of ports that they could, you know, get out there that are really good games. I think Nintendo knows it, too. They're like, all right, fuck it. We're just going to put everything on the Switch. They should. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like old Tim Getty's, you know, obsession with getting, you know, the new Mario Brothers U. Because it's, you know, one of the best, you know, Mario games they've ever yeah. made. I want, but nobody played it. Dude, I want Mario Galaxy. I, I've i never played that. I only well, buy a, played it at friends' houses and stuff, and it's so much fun. We'll, we'll buy a, 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 a Shield TV and get oh, a VPN yeah. set oh, yeah. for China. Right. You can do that. <laughs> That's going to happen. That has to be Nintendo testing the waters. It has or, to Or, you be. know, they just took some money from, like, Tencent or whoever, and that was part of the know, deal. Man. I got to believe that, that they're going to do something with that. I I mean, if you've got a fully working, you know, mobile emulator yeah. for a Wii game. Bob blew my mind the other day because we were talking about um, the online service that we're, we should know about by now. That's the other thing that would have been in that direct. I didn't know yep. Super Mario Brothers was going to be part of that package. I'm yeah. excited yeah. about that. Yeah, the original Super Mario's. Yeah. Like, they've only talked about original NES games so far. Well, I think that was another thing I read that I ran across. We're supposed to announce more than just the NES games. Okay, hold on. So is that not Super Mario from Super Nintendo? No. Super Mario That's... 3? Super Mario 3 was originally on NES. Yeah. Oh, son of it a was, bitch. What is it the was, Super Mario Brothers on Super Nintendo called? Super it Mario it was on Super Nintendo. But it was it was on both consoles. Oh, was it Super Mario World? Super it, Mario World is the one with the cape where you can spin. Holy yeah. shit, I didn't know this for all of my life. 
So <laughs> on the Super Nintendo, oh my god! If you had the right bundle, there was a bundle that came with Super the Mario 3. Super Mario All Stars. I had oh, Super Mario yeah, World. Oh yeah, I forgot about All Stars. I had that. I had which World. was like the original three games just in a ported yes, version yes, right. to the NES, Super Nintendo. I mean, no, I've been thinking about World this whole time. That yeah. is why when me and you, Bob, were talking about how it doesn't work on the new or the old DS, and you were all confused, I was talking about Super Mario World does not work on my DS. I have to have a new 3DS to play that. Hmm. I still don't understand why. But <laughs> it's just a thing that Nintendo it's decided to do. a fucking Super Nintendo game, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay, so I'm not as excited about... Uh, the streaming stream yeah, the Nintendo thing. Like anything outside of what Nintendo said as far as like there being anything other than original NES titles, that's wishful thinking on people's I, I think I'm just gonna happen. assume. I, I think look, it... I'll, I'll I'll wait until Nintendo says it. Because I have oh, yeah, me too. a feeling they will, but I was like, like I, I don't know, I don't like I've heard that they have a working GameCube emulator for, for the Switch and stuff like that. You see, this is this is my Mario, Super Mario World. Yeah, I played the hell yeah. out of this game. I've beaten this game multiple times over. Oh, it's a fantastic game. We had Super Mario World. We had uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Street Fighter, and what we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the fuck were we uh, talking about earlier? That was one of the uh, games I loved on Super Nintendo. I already don't remember. Okay. I've lost it. I don't know. We talk Anyways, about a lot of random shit. We do. So yeah, I, there was only a few games that I had on Super, on Super Nintendo. And then like, my cousins had like Mario Kart and shit like that. And, oh, Donkey Kong World. That was another one we had. That's another one. Man, we need to get Donkey Kong World. Not World. Country. On the, the Switch. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm tired. Tropical Freeze. Just uh, play Tropical, Tropical Freeze, Freeze. doesn't look like it's the same. I just... I'm the I'm the anti-nostalgia guy that wants nostalgia all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, these are good games. Like, Super Mario World is awesome. I might have to acquire a copy of this. Just because... Yeah, I would love to have this on the Oh, Switch, Mega Man play. X. That was the other game I owned on Super Yeah, Nintendo. okay, yeah, we were Nintendo. talking about Mega Man oh, 11. That's right. Yeah. Mega Man X I've beaten multiple times over, too. So, uh... Nothing else was leaked so far. Though we did get news that the cloud feature does not work with certain games. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> people, Bob has an explanation for this, but people are pretty mad. Well, you have an explanation for Pokemon, at least. Yeah, for for the other games, I can't really speak to. But so, what's um, the deal with Pokemon? Basically, it would just make it really easy for people to to clone Pokemon and cheese the game, basically. And they got that bank they want you to pay for, right? Which still makes it easy to cheese through a game, but. At least it's, I guess, a legal way. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I don't think that's going to work for Let's Go, though. The bank. Why is that? The, the bank? I'm sure yeah. they'll have something. Well, I they've think... already announced because you can, like, transfer extras from Go into from Go. Let's Go. Yeah. But I don't think the bank, which is, uses, like, all the previous I, games, I don't think that's going to connect with Let's I Go. I think... I think we'll get the bank for the next game. Yes, definitely. Because that's a but proper yeah, Pokemon. Think, right. I think the, this is a proper Pokemon, too. Watch your fucking mouth. <clears throat> I, I don't disagree with you on that. It's, it's just <laughs> it's the next one in. This is like side, like a side game, almost. No, this is a main game. Okay. We're not getting this argument. <laughs> it's not an argument that we do have, typically. But no, it's, it's, just... it's the main game. I understand okay. what you're trying to say. Yeah. It's not expanding on the Pokemon universe, I don't think. I don't know. No, it's it's a remake. And it's yeah. sticking with... Instead of doing what remakes are doing now with sticking with the original Pokedex and then once you finish opening up, 
your national Pokedex. This is just staying with the original Pokedex, yeah. and whatever, the, whatever the new generation eight Pokemon is. I hope because it would be fucking smart. I hope that this game works with a bank because there's going to be a bunch of people that don't. That's not going to make people go. I have to go play Pokemon Yellow now. I'm going to go buy a DS. I'm going to go buy the bank, and I'm going to go buy Yellow or Gold or whatever. They're not going to do that. But yeah, gonna, they would um, pay for the bank if their Let's Go stuff could transfer to the next Pokemon game. Right. Which is why I think the bank will be connected in yeah. some way. At least to transfer from this game to the bank. Because you can do that with the virtual console games on the DS. Yeah. Like you can move Pokemon from yellow to the bank, but I don't think you can move them from the bank to yellow. I don't know. I've only I'm pretty sure that's how that works. I've only like transferred everything to the bank. Right. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Don't know. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I'm excited. I still have to buy the the Pokeball Plus. I haven't bought that yet. I'm not gonna buy that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna buy it. I guess I'm not. I'm not that deep. Yeah. But, um. They also announced that Splatoon won't use it. I guess it's leaked and they didn't really get announced. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nintendo Splatoon had an official then... response. Right. They're worried about people, uh, their ranks being higher on the cloud save and them going back to that or something along those lines. Right. Which makes sense. So I don't know how that works. Splatoon is something I've never played, but even now Splatoon looking at this gameplay, even it looks look. like fun. I don't think I could do this. Maybe <laughs> just because I don't understand it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Splatoon's really fun. It's just, you know, the thing that's silly to me is, like, your rank, your gear, your unlocks, your, yeah. like, stats as far as damage for your weapons is all locally saved. That does seem weird. Because there's no other multiplayer game that does that, really, right? Yeah, no, there's plenty of them, and they also all have severe cheating. <laughs> Yeah. Why would it not be a server based save? Yeah, I don't because know. this game also has like seventeen hertz servers. Like like <laughs> they, like that's a legitimate stat. Like Jeez. What do normal like, this servers is have? Thirty or higher on average okay. in most of your games. Like your battlefields, your Call of Duties, your Fortnites, they're all at sixty. PUBG's even at 60 now. So this just doesn't have the power to save all that kind of stuff. Well, they just didn't invest in that infrastructure. Yeah. Like, like they, they actively chose not to invest in that. I wonder if they could. Like, switch they can. They could. I mean, yeah. the <laughs> problem is a lot of, like, that server-side tools and, like, refresh rates, the, that networking code, like, a lot of that is built into the engine. Yeah. So I don't know how much. It's probably similar to the like online coding for fighting games. Well, some of those have good coding and some don't. Yeah. Well, the thing with Splatoon 2 specifically is that it was built from the ground up to function like handheld on Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, it, like they, they did an incredibly good job of coding for bad network conditions. Okay. But you're Not kind of, you know, conditions. you're kind of screwed if you have, you know, like an Ethernet adapter and you're playing docked. Like, like if you've got a good internet connection, you're kind of at a disadvantage in a lot of the scenarios. And not to mention, like, like I said, the rampant, like actual, like hack cheating going on. Right. And apparently some third-party games such as FIFA 19 and Dark Souls also don't support cloud saves. Yeah, I have a, I have a feeling it's going to be like the initial like introduction of trophies into PlayStation games. Right. And it's got to be like, it's not a thing built into the system. It's a, hey, here's the API. You've just got to put a small patch for the game. Right. You know, Hopefully. as long as you follow this format, you can then update but uh, who knows? Hopefully, that's what it'll be. 
and everything will have cloud saved as they should. It's so what fucking year is it? Like, <laughs> how am I saying that now when everything's had cloud saves forever? Well, people just want any form of getting their saves off of their Switch. Yeah, that's true. Str- stranded on a little island. Because there are people currently doing, you know, temporary boots into the homebrew OS just to save their Switch data onto their PC in case something goes wrong. Oh, wow. I would. There's no fucking way I'd do that. I would never mess with the OS on my Switch. Like I said, <laughs> that's a temporary. As soon as you reboot yeah. it, it clears it out of the memory. That still sounds terrifying. I don't know. I've, I've been, you know, compiling Android ROMs for 10 years. Yeah, I'll probably figure it out. <laughs> uh, I've been, I've also been dual booting PCs for years, and I know sometimes shit gets fucked up. <laughs> yeah, shit can go bad yeah. fast when you're messing with partitions. Yeah, no thanks, rather not. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that's pretty much everything for this week. You got any other news? Any other stuff you guys want to talk about? I, I just want to say I don't know why. But during the Pokemon talk, my brain drifted back oh, no. to the weird oh, there it is. Duke Nukem like Tomb Raider style game oh. called Duke Nukem Time to Kill. What? <laughs> That's not where I thought that was going. Like it was just such a weird thing. Like at the peak of Tomb Raider being popular, this company made a Duke Nukem game that was in the style of Tomb Raider. <laughs> it was an original PlayStation exclusive, apparently. And yeah, dude, it was just this dumb, weird third person Duke Nukem game of you exploring these levels with these random guns and you swap out different things. Oh, man, look at that run animation. <laughs> look at them <laughs> cheeks. Yeah. Can't shoot through the fence. Yeah. Man, this shit oh, was weird. God. Look at those textures disappearing like, <laughs> as he turns. Yeah. Man, uh, it reminded me of when I was looking this up. Like, looking at the list of Duke Nukem games. They had, like, a Duke Nukem game every year for, like, six years. Yeah. For, really? Like, for, like, 97 to, like, 2003, I want to say. like. Yeah, they thought they were good. What the hell? I have never yeah, seen man, this. this- yeah, this shit was so bad. The only thing that was cool about this game was the opening, like, CG cinematic of him, <laughs> like, driving his car and, like, shooting, you know, the pig aliens that are dressed like cops. You know, that's a metaphor and a half. Right. <laughs> but uh, it was playing this song from the band Stabbing Westward. Oh. Uh, well, they made that song you would have heard, Hey Man, Nice Shot. Oh, I what? thought that was, uh... Yeah. That's, um... Filter. Yeah. Filter, yeah. No, they did the, the other one, shit. Stabbing Westward, yeah, no. They do have a popular like, song. They had, like, Save yourself. two songs. Yeah. Yeah, they've got a couple of popular songs. Yeah, but, hmm. but both of those songs I'm thinking of were in that, uh, Tales from the Crypt movie. I, I uh, came out of nowhere. <laughs> what? Hold on. The the one with uh, Jada Pinkett Smith. Demon Knight, I want to say. Are, are we doing obscure one. movies now? The way this podcast is going, we're doing obscure every- yes, yeah, everything. Yeah, Demon Knight. This is an obscure yeah, episode. <laughs> yeah, tell us the crypt Demon Knight from like 1995. God. Wow. This is the uh, CG intro you mentioned. It's a yeah. strip club. Fuck. Well, we're getting demonetized. Thanks, troll. Hey, I didn't tell you to play it. I was just saying. Lord. Oh, they didn't show wow. Yeah, weird, weird <laughs> Terminator oh, stuff. Man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that thing just drifted into my brain. Yeah, see, there you go. God, this looks <laughs> terrible. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and it forever will be. 
Lord. Yeah. Oh, this. All right, Troll is officially losing his fucking mind. Every time, every week that happens, that signifies it is the end of the podcast, folks. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Troll, where can they find you? Uh, you know, just anywhere. Just search that name, Trollbeard. Remember that pesky underscore. It's true. Come to and if you look him it. up on YouTube, YouTube is going to be like, we can't find Trollbeard underscore. Do you want to search for Trollbeard underscore? And you have to tell the motherfucker yes. <laughs> Are you serious? It's, do, do it. Look up Trollbeard underscore and it'll show you a bunch of troll beads. Yeah, it'll say huh? uh, showing results for troll beads and search instead Trollbeard underscore. <laughs> Are you sure you just didn't misspell it? No, look, motherfucker, I can show you my yeah, screen. Yeah, just did it to me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just over here searching for me. Search results for troll beads. Search oh, instead for troll build underscore. <laughs> and all this stuff yeah. comes up. Yeah, what troll dolls. <laughs> all sorts of weird shit. It's a, they're trying try to keep exact... troll beard down, man. Well, also, like... I haven't regularly been posting anything to YouTube. Actually, yeah, my YouTube is just Trollbeard without the underscore now. I forgot oh, I, I never changed it. Uh, <laughs> Fix it. It still comes up with the same damn thing. Fix yeah. it. Add the underscore. Well, you need to add it to your keywords. <laughs> Trollbeard underscore. I'm not, I guess I'm not about the SEO line. <laughs> gotta be. You gotta be, man. I can do a whole podcast on SEO. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Right right along with the, the China bullshit. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right along with the uh, why Rockstar fucking says fuck you to PC gamers. No, we don't need to go over that again. All right, so you can uh, find Trollbeard everywhere on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube. Bob, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me here on Twitch uh, at Blackbeard Bob, and then you can find me on Twitter at Doug theme song. Hell yeah. And Bob, you'll be streaming every night now at 10? Not every night, just Most Tuesday nights. through Friday. Okay. Tuesday through Friday, and then maybe Saturdays when we're done with the podcast. Just depends on what time it is. And I'll probably be right there with them now. I have time to do all kinds of things. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. You got Hopefully not for long, out. though. Yeah. Hopefully not. And you can find me on Twitter at Best of the Realm, Facebook, Best of the Realm Gaming, YouTube, Best of the Realm, everywhere I'm Best of the Realm. You can find my content. You can also find our partners, the LARP Brothers, and what's it? It's Gaming and LARP Brothers right now, and the Future Heals podcast, old stuff. You can find all that stuff on futurevillains.com. That's F E W T R U E V I L L A I N S dot com. And you can find us on Twitter, Future Villains, and Facebook, Future Villains. Thank you for listening, guys. This has been the Future Villains Podcast, and we're out. That's our outro now. Fuck it.